So I'm calling to order the Shalott Select Board meeting. It's Monday, October 22nd at 6 o'clock, and we uh, will follow our agenda. Um, I want to welcome you guys here from the school. I do want to say we have several items on our agenda, so we have up to 20 minutes allocated for this discussion, and if we're trying to make some points, we should get it so we can make a, have a vote or conclude it within that time frame. And then I think the Fowler Ridge folks are involved in both uh, the, the crosswalk phase and then the septic line phase. So um, introduce yourself when you speak. Um, tell us what, what the issue is, kind of refresh us and it refreshes the, uh, the VCAM as well when people look at it in a week or a month from now. So. The floor is yours and the... My name is Jen Roth and I am a co-principal at Charlotte Central School. I am the fifth through eighth grade instructional leader. And we noticed over the first month and a half of school a growing group of students who were walking over to the Philo Ridge Farm just after school, a place to go and hang out. And as the numbers grew, we realized we really wanted to make sure we were creating a safe passage. It's not a pedestrian crossing at that place, and if you've ever done pickup at the school, you know it's pretty congested. So we would just like to work with the town about putting in a crosswalk and some signage so that the kids have access across that road, um, which is Heinsberg Road. And I brought along some friends to maybe share the importance of this experience and why they also believe the crosswalk is good for us. We'd like to go first. If you'd like to say something, just state your name and if you'd like to say something, proceed. Uh, yeah, um, I'm Abby Pitcavage. Um, we think it's a great place to go if you're going to hang out or like just from a social, just to be social with people over there, it's a great place to go. Um, my name's Prue Stevens. Um, yeah, I go there almost every Tuesday with my friends and it's just a really great place um, to socialize. It's also a really safe place um, and we get a lot of freedom. It's really beautiful um, and all the local food, it's really nice and it's delicious. Okay. Um, so it's always just fun to go over there. Thank you. <laughs> Nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would just say our numbers are growing. So last Tuesday we had up to 25 students who crossed over the street um, to make it over to the farm. In, in some cases we're having them wait and one of the adults, I'll walk them across or we have actually we had a state trooper who was visiting the campus and he helped get the kids across the street. But we just want to make sure the signage is out there for all of the drivers. So what, is, what is your preference for recognition? I mean, you, I mean, there's a lot of options: crosswalks, signage. We can do a speed study. So, what do you? What, and then perhaps a volunteer uh, guard or something from the school. Or so. What? What do you? What, what do you think is what you'd like? So I'd really like to propose two pedestrian crossing signs be mounted and then have a crosswalk painted from our back parking lot. There's a field directly across and I think we have a 200 foot or 250 foot um, recommendation from the state of Vermont before the stop sign to the crosswalk. Okay. So I'd like some help from the town just making sure where the safest crossing space would be. If the town could help us with the painting, I'm sure we could order up some signs. Was there where, some where's the crosswalk um, <clears throat> yeah. in relation to that driveway? There's currently no crosswalk. There. No, no. Where are you? Where Where is the plan? Right there. Where 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 do Where do Where do you propose the crosswalk to be? So what we have been doing is taking students up the ramp of our back parking lot and okay. crossing over where there's a stone pathway that's been laid down at that at, from Philo Ridge Farm. The problem I see there, and I would maybe want some recommendations, is the amount of traffic we have coming into the school parking lot from both directions. 
that maybe it's not a standard width crosswalk, but maybe it's something a little bit larger so that it would block off that whole entrance of the ramp across the road. So are you proposing to put this crosswalk where the ramp is and not have a ramp for the cars to go into? No, I, we would still need the ramp for the cars. <clears throat> well, I'm just trying to separate the, the, the kids from where the vehicles are going to be. <clears throat> and right now that ramp has a, has a railing on either side of it. There's no place to jump to if a car happens to want to pull into that while these kids are going up this ramp. I was just wondering if there was going to be some kind of alternate entrance to the road, like a sidewalk or a path outside of that ramp for vehicles. So the trooper who was visiting, giving us some safety ideas, wondered about making a diagonal crosswalk so that partway up the grass embankment, kids could cross. The problem is, on the far side, the, Mount, the Philo Ridge farm side of the road, that's still just mud at this point. So we would maybe work with the farm to see if we can get some stone put in. But a diagonal would put children on the road longer. I would think we want to go perpendicular to the road straight across for maximum safety. I mean, I don't think you want the kids to be going this way when they could hop across quickly. I would agree. I, I would trust some of your expertise on the exact design of where it would go and maybe work with the farm around what would happen on the other side of the road. I mean, if there could be some kind of a gravel on the Mount Philo Ridge side, mm -hmm. so it goes straight across and then it connects up to the current path you're using. Absolutely. I mean, I know there's a big fence there on the Mount Philo Ridge side. I don't know if it comes that far. Well, there's a they, they bought stone down for the entrance that, okay. we, that we approved. There's stone right here. <clears throat> and there's a stone path on the very edge of the, exactly. of the, of the Philo Ridge Farm property on the, near that field. But what I was thinking is a little bit different. I was thinking of trying to put a ramp up in the green instead of going at an angle make a path kind of go up that bank at such a steep angle maybe make a a path a ramp that started at the parking lot level right near the corner of the school the end the, yeah. and <clears throat> make a crosswalk there and have it go have it turn at a 90 degree angle and go along that bank to your ramp no, to your car ramp. Mm -hmm. So go up that way and then do a 90 to go across the road right next to that car ramp. Is the district weighed in on this at all? Um, the district's recommendation was to first reach out to the town and see if it was something we could do collaboratively. The thing that comes to my mind is this becomes an official crossing for students. I'm gonna guess it has to be ADA compliant, has to be wheelchair accessible. That's why I asked if the district weighed in, because I can't, I think once you sanction an access and make it official for a school, I don't think you can get away from the ADA rules. But I think you're probably absolutely correct. I think so. I mean, you have to have Everything the elevator else. just for half the flight Everything of stairs. Else. So I'm going to guess what Frank was saying would probably work if you put a ramp up if the grade is a little shallow enough, you could well, I was talk, That's why I was talking the distance from the corner of the school all the way to the car ramp would be a, a, a slight yeah, enough a grade yeah, to yeah. get up there and then turn and to when go you get across, across the, the road. street you're going to have to probably do the other thing and i don't know if ada likes gravel or what so i think that's probably a can of worm once this becomes an official project so i have an idea um for right now until we figure it out because you got to cross next next week tomorrow um, what time of day are you crossing the road? Same time all those moms are coming in to pick up the kids? Yeah. Okay. So what I would recommend, for example, you could meet on the gym side of the school. So that's the east side of the school. 
on the south side of the stairs right there towards the park, uh, playground. And you would wait about 15 minutes. I think the congestion is done by then. And then it would be, in my opinion, up to a parent of the children, two parents <coughs> taking turns. Because after 1.55, it is up to the parent to figure out how to safely get you wherever you're going to be. They know where you are at 1.56. And so the way to do that is a parent would come just before that, and they would hang out and wait for all of you to gather at once, and then we'll figure out how to parent would get you across the street. It's also, you know, maybe somebody from the farm would come over and be that person sometimes or uh, because I see this happening for years to come and you girls and you kids started it, but it's, it will continue for a long time. I think the crossing could be simple. I mean, I like, you know, to, or not. But I just see that at, at uh, 2 15, that's when you know everybody has to know that they're gathered there and we're gonna all walk across it in a single file. We're only gonna, you know, one parent would get out, smile, thank you, have a vest on, leave the vest at the school in the music room. So, we're, every, whoever's gonna do it would do that. And then the parent goes on and you guys continue. We got across the street. Because Fritz is absolutely right. We're probably not quite ready to make, you know, put gravel and ramps. All of these things will take time, but you want to go over tomorrow and the days <coughs> to come. So that's my suggest suggestion for now. And well, I assume you're doing that as already. I think what you're suggesting aren't the no. parents taking the kids across the street now or at 215 no? at 215 there should be one the, all the cars should leave and you know most of them i mean they're all a little bit older or whatever they're just going to have to be responsible for yourself to stay on the side of the road you know where the where it's designated that you walk and then you all walk across it at the same time it, we'll have to go back to a little old fashioned way for a bit until we can figure out the farm's going to continue to grow. I imagine that area will grow. I think you guys run on the field, so there'll be times later that will cross to go. So that's what I was feeling. It took me all day to kind of figure it out, but after looking, I looked at it several times. I know all. I, I feel very comfortable with that whole area growing, and you're part of the growth by you starting it. By going over there. So no road markings, no signs? Well, no. I guess I, I, uh, I guess I'd listen and, I mean, we certainly could do some. I think a really great art sign, uh, something if that's all right with Junior. It's Junior, you have to get permission to put another sign in the road. <laughs> we could attach one to a sign, Kids Crossing Tuesdays at 2.15 even. You know, just put it out there. Almost well, school zones are children at play and those Ooh. other signs. I think. Yeah. And is this an official sanctioned school event or is this like an extracurricular activity? Ex or? This is turning a community school into a walking school, where in the past we didn't have resources for Charlotte Central School where kids could just leave and walk to go somewhere. So <coughs> as the community is shifting, we're just making sure we have a pathway that's safe for them to travel. They're not sanctioned. When the kids leave, they have parents' notes at the end of the day, and a staff member has currently been crossing them. I cross them quite a bit. That may mitigate some of the ADA requirements if it's not an official Bobby school thing. Uh, we're happy to put some design engineering efforts into it on our side of the street too, to figure out how to make an ADA path ramp. You know, I, I don't know the exact codes, but I'm, I'm sure we could uh, figure out how to make it work once they get across the road to, to make it an, an official sanction. Yeah, I'm sure there's, uh, there's no, there's, it can be done. 
I mean, put I, it on the school site. Out of my mind the school that it, site. It I mean, I, I think the there's the site. driveway, mm -hmm. and um, I think we, you know, we want the town support that if we go through that exercise and figure out a path, that we could come back to you all with a proposed solution in a way to make it, um, you know, let Jen go back to regional and say the town select board was in favor of this, um, just to give us some positive momentum to get a, you know, with the end goal of getting a crosswalk. What you know, we'd, we'd love your guys' blessing that you would be behind that if we continue to do the research and, and uh, design design for it. Definitely be. I mean, my look at the map and also the town administrator's report, uh, it looks like the red zone is going to be the easiest to achieve any type of gradual grade that you'd need to comply with ADA on the school side um, because the road is already a pretty slight ramp. It also seems a lot safer than running some type of sidewalk traffic parallel to the road on that hill. Um, so that the red zone you're talking about is to the east of the ramp? Of the ramp. Okay. Um, but are we too close to the corner of? You know, I think the idea of queuing might be 10, 20 years out of, I, I've seen the school at uh, the busy time when kids get out. It seems like most of the traffic is actually on the school side of that. Um, sign and uh, it's on every side. if you think about how long it takes for kids to cross versus having those kids stand there while cars are driving by them I think the preferable option is to create a crosswalk that have cars wait 10 seconds 30 seconds I don't disagree but with the way the cars are queuing at, in the road that yeah. when kids go decide they're gonna go across the road they can't be seen. It's like having, it's like walking out from between parked cars. So they wait 15 minutes. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I've, know, I've gone through there with the, with, with the bus and, and I've had times where I've had to wait a measurable amount of time just to get through there. And sometimes I couldn't because there wasn't a big enough space for one vehicle, my vehicle to get through. Why does Much, anybody want their children walking through all those cars? let the cars disperse and then they get walked over and then you could stop them at a crosswalk. Have somebody the other there. Thing they don't that, need to be walking out while the cars are, all, the cars have been picking up the kids for years and years like this. And those children need to wait well, 15 minutes maybe. Why would we not want, why would we want them to walk in all those cars? Well, that's not the question I'm asking. The question is, you know, Vermont state law says that people crossing a road have the right of way. And I wouldn't want to not support the road rules. And so in Burlington, where I work, you see at school time, all those crosswalks and even UVM on Spear Street now, if there's someone who wants to cross, and even Quinnyaska, someone wants to cross the road, sure. they have the right of way to cross the road. Absolutely. And I think we shouldn't, um, you know, our responsibility is the roadways, not the school right, and not but, the but, school but traffic. I, but a lot of times where there is a crosswalk, there's, a, there's usually no parking within so many feet of the crosswalk so that people can be seen. And here, I don't, with the queuing happening, I don't see that space being adhered to. To me, the queuing is the issue. See, that queuing is not I don't, legal, I don't, right? People are parking on on the traveled portion of the road, which is not legal. It's an issue that's come up before the select board before. Uh, to have an illegal road activity that's the consequence of kind of the density and the timing of the schools letting out of the kids shouldn't stop a legal activity of people wanting to cross a road. I think we should address the queuing problem with the school so that it is safe for people to cross a road. I agree, but that should be taken up before this crosswalk is, I think is the, considered to me. Well, yeah. I think they could be doing parallel. Yeah, in parallel. My question is, who, who weighs, who's the authority? Is it um, the district supporting this or is, how do, how do we make sure the, the crosswalk is, meets the requirements, ADA, is that VTRANS or? Well, it's, a, it's a town road, so it's a, it is the select board's decision. Uh, you can get assistance, whether it's regional planning or consultant, to, de to help you determine whether it meets engineering requirements. 
but it's, it is your decision. It's, it's, a, it's a, the school's on, on the side of the road, but it's the select board's road. I, I think that it sounds like probably most of the select board's in favor of this. It's just stuff needs to be done, permitting and engineering needs to be done before we can put a stamp on it because I'm, I, for one, wouldn't want to approve a crosswalk that hasn't been engineered by appropriate standards. So, it so I mean, once, like the, once the design is done, I think the paint on the road and the sign or two is probably a piece of cake. Right. It sounds like the engineering piece, Philo Ridge Farm would be willing to work with Chittenden County Regional Planning. So we have, is that something that regional planning would consider doing? Another, another option is reduce the speed there. It's 30, 30 or 35 right now. Well, I don't, it's 30. 30. It's 30. I, I don't think speed is the issue as much as it is traffic. Yeah. And the queuing has been a problem independent of this. It's just now compounding. You know, it's a I, compounding factor. I think if you kid, right now kids don't cross the street there, the speed limit is 30. I think if it becomes a school zone, kids are actually crossing the street. I think you're going to find the rules say it's got to slow down anyway. I don't think that'll be a choice. Yeah, Burlington, they have the ones that they're 25. When lights are flashing, it's 25. And they're 25. So seven. I think when kids are crossing, it's going to have to be, that's going to be part of the engineering. Someone's going to say you got to have handicap ramps. During school hours. 25. And uh, the other thing, I think the shortest term solution for safety is uh, the option of having a volunteer, uh, maybe the PTA. Maybe there's a sign-up sheet for parents that pick their kids up at the Philo Ridge Farm. They can kind of co-op one day a week or one day a month uh, to help with crossing. That seems like um, the safest short-term solution to making sure students can cross and that cars are abiding the rules of the road, which is, I think, something that's important to model uh, to our students. That, uh, one other thing I'd love to point out to the select board is, um, yes, there's the opportunity for students to go after school, but you know we would love to explore other opportunities with the school for educational opportunities during the day and so forth when there isn't queuing and a crosswalk will obviously provide safer passage. Even with adults, you know, you can get out there and flag all you want, but a crosswalk obviously improves the safety for, for the children um, and everyone else going back and forth. So. I'm sure that'll be a very beautiful area across from the school. I'm, we're just just growing it. So to answer your question, we support it. So now I'm trying to figure out what's the next step is, do we talk to regional planning and work and would they come down and give us some advice and? Yeah, we have to see what their schedule is, you know, in terms of fitting it into their work plan and all that, whether they would be able to, um, you know, have a, do it in the current fiscal year or in their work plan for the next fiscal year. Because it will be a crosswalk that can be used any time. I mean, it's not just whatever you said, 2.15 in the afternoon. It'll be there right. for any time. People might want to go over and get a cup of coffee. If you want it done faster, you're just going to call an engineer and hire somebody to do it. <laughs> okay, so it, it's hard to, to give you a final solution, but we're behind it. I think some planning, some work needs to be done. Um, there's several issues. The queuing that um, Terry just talked about, the queuing of the children, the queuing of the cars, and then the crosswalk, and all that has to kind of be taken into consideration, I think. So, so until then, I would wait for a few weeks till we could, and wait a few minutes before crossing the road instead of disrupting what's already been going on for a really long time. I used to live in, the, uh, in Japan years ago, and uh, when there were people went across the road, they had a, a cone on each side of the road with a bunch of red flags. And so, and it was a crosswalk there, but what the kids or the parents would do is pick up the red flag and go across the road and stick it back on the other side and vice versa. I mean, there's different, different things that, that, that can work. Yeah. So I think we have to end this. Thank you for coming in. Interesting discussion. You can see the things we have to consider and um, we'll, we'll be advised on the progress. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you for coming in. So the second part of this session is the, um, the agreement to allow a, um, a force main to be put under the road on, on Mount Filo Road for the purposes of septic. Um, are you the spokesperson? Uh, yes. And Tell me your name again. Bobby Harvey. Okay. 
Why don't you just explain briefly, and I think we will probably vote on it pretty quickly. Uh, so we are proposing a, a force main under the road, um, as shown in the uh, on the screen there, uh, for uh, our, our waste disposal system, which is um, now off screen to the south, um, has failed. So we are looking at replacing that system um, on our property, but on the adjacent side of the road. Uh, we have done uh, soil testing and so forth on uh, the, the west side of the road, and Dave Marshall is here and can explain those results, but we're not able to find uh, favorable soils. That's also, that area has been greatly disturbed over the years. Uh, there was an old manure pit on top of the hill, which has now been filled over, and it's a beautiful market garden. Um, it's also some of our, of our growing areas uh, further north. Um, so that would be, uh, we we're proposing just a direction of war under, under the road, um, which will tie into um, some of the existing infrastructure that's there with a little bit more addition. I see two data lines. Which data is that one, the big one? Oh, that one there. Oh, OK. There's, uh, we found over the years, obviously, the, the foots had uh, put a lot of stuff under the road, and um, we've kind of showed those. But uh, this is the FM, this is the force name that we're proposing. Um, junior, I see Junior here. What's your view, uh, Junior? Um, I'm OK with it. I met with uh, Bush, um, who was up there. Uh, and I just told him as long as you know, they, when they did the digging on the sides of the road that they stayed in the ditch or to the back of the ditch and get it into the shoulder of the road. And you had a clearance from an eight, eight feet from the blacktop on either? What's that? You had a um, distance from the blacktop where you wanted the bore to go in? Yeah, we normally do, but because of where, at least where Bush had told me, um, I don't think we're gonna, they're going to be able to go back that far because of the back bank is really steep. So I think they would be like right in the ditch would be where their pit would start. And I said that I was okay with that as long as they didn't get into the slope of the road from the ditch up to the road. They have the shoulder of the road. Is that not the receiving pit for the horn? So, yeah, so the receiving pit is, is actually outside the right away, which is good for our perspective. Is there a standard application? It's a license agreement, so we don't really have a, an application. It's not, okay. it's not like a road cut. Want to make a motion? Sure. I'll make a motion to uh, allow the installation of a wastewater force main under Mount Philo Road for Philo Ridge Farm, LLC. So it's according to their plan? According to the plan and subject to the license agreement. Is that signed, the document was signed? Yeah, uh, they've, um, I drafted it, they reviewed it, and then we have a, a signable document. It's, it hasn't been signed yet. Do you have a sign? Sure. Second. Okay. Okay. Any other comments, any other discussion? No. All in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll have to talk. I'll, I'll yes. And uh, once we do some more research. So yes. Thank you all for your time. Yep. Fire and rescue, done. front and center. Check it out. I guess that is out. She's getting done. She's not. She's retiring. I guess. Everywhere, or just. Sure. I, I guess seeing everywhere. I don't. Didn't get that close to it. Hey everybody. Hi Tom. How are you? How you doing, Good. Frank? Good. How are you? Patrice, Dick, Hello. all these friendly faces. Um, so what I was thinking we should tackle tonight, or what's in our handout, is the actual um, technique for um, calculating the surplus and then upgrading the agreement with that agreement of the calculation. Um, 
I think we have some inputs from our CPA. I think, Mary, you were involved. And we have a procedure on how to do that. So what's the best way to start? To go through the, the calculation framework, which would be the attachment? Is that what makes sense? That makes sense. You want to walk us through and pretend um, we're? I don't have a copy of that with me. So if I can borrow somebody's hand sheet, or I can just look at the. I could probably stand. <clears throat> Up there. I, I can actually see that from here, too. Oh, I can, too. For, <laughs> he's got the front large. Don't make it any smaller, Dean. <laughs> um, so we started this conversation earlier this year. I'm trying to remember if it was spring or summer yet. And we started talking about how is it calculated. It goes back to a, a conversation probably a few years ago and the methodology. Um, our accountant had communicated with Rick Brigham of his interpretation of how it should be done. And this narrative was um, reviewed while Rick Brigham was doing his field audit for the town. So Mary, myself, Dean, and Rick all met. We reviewed the language. Um, the only change in departure from our prior conversation is one of the source documents. So initially, um, the first bullet said the budget versus actual because that's the document that you're accustomed to seeing on a, a monthly basis um, because you're all, always looking at measuring our performance against what the budget was. Um, there was agreement between the four of us that we would change the source document. The numbers don't change from one document to the other. It's just whether or not it's just your actual expenditures versus your budget versus actual. So we changed that document to the profit and loss by department report. So that's the only change? That's the only change um, from oh. the conversation we had. Which was recommended by Rick and Mary, I guess. Yep. And the balance of that just talks about um, the framework that's been in place since the MOA, right. which was that you know there was agreement that it was 10% of the three-year average of yep. the most recent um, appropriations, and those appropriations were the year just ended, which you're measuring against in the two priors. Um, which is an example in the. <clears throat> so if you if you then use the narrative or the framework in addition to the worksheet that your has the orange on it. That's where you do step one, two, three, and four. And it talks about what, um, where you get each line. So basically it's, you know, your taxes, your tax return. Line one equals this, line two equals this. Three is the sum of this and that and whatnot. So Dean has this um, also in an Excel spreadsheet so you could plug numbers in it at any time. Um, I have it and our auditor has it in an Excel spreadsheet as well. So when uh, our auditor from Tapir and Huckabay was here in <coughs> September, um, the audit's not finalized, but adjusting entries are being posted. We're just waiting to go through the QC at their firm. But we both sat down independently, ran the numbers in the spreadsheet, and we came out with the same bottom line. So the formula works regardless of who's actually using it. So as you go down through that, um, the colored squares are yep. actually um, input. The others that are also already have zeros on the example on the screen are calculations. So as you put numbers in line one and two, it would automatically update line three. Same thing, four, five. Um, as you plug numbers there, there's a calculation that populates six. Line seven obviously is line three line, minus line six. And when you get down to the MOA reserve balance, that is what the reserve balance was for the prior fiscal year. The net change is your net income for the year just ended. And if you scroll down and you net those two lines together, you get the reserve balance for the fiscal year just ended. Which is, in that, is that the number that doesn't exceed the 10%? So that number you then compare. So line 11 is an if statement. So if we were dealing with the real um, 
an open Excel spreadsheet, and we had real numbers there. Line 11 says, if, all right. Go bring it back down a little bit again. If line 10 if is. If line 10 uh, is greater, greater than, than, then we uh, would owe the town money. If it's less than, it says it reverts to um, the zero. So if you go up to, go down to the table itself. So we started the MOA agreement back in 2013. Obviously, um, well, it was 2014 by the time it was signed. So the three prior years was 2014 and the two priors. That's why 2012 and 2013 are in the table. Three-year average changes year to year. That's already calculated. And since we already knew, when I was developing the table, we already knew what the FY19 budget was. That's included there. So that's a three-year average, 62, 54, 80. That would be for next year. FY18's okay. three-year average is the 57, 538. And we do this when your audit report is complete? Is when it's been finalized, yes. You don't, so have the, you don't have the adjustments until then. Right. right. So the, um, the numbers that I worked with our auditor when he was still here doing his field audit, um, the net change in the reserve yep. was 26446 What was the number? 26446 That's line nine? Yes. 26 what? 26446 yeah. With the, um, so line eight, so you can have it was 26, 82201. So the reserve balance as of 63018 is 53,268. And 53 cents if you You lost that. me a little bit. So I'm on line nine, mm -hmm. the net change 26,446. What's the next thing you said? Um, line eight. Line eight above. Right, was. The reserve balance as of 63017. Yep. That was 262201. So line 10 is the sum of those 52268.53. Now that in comparison to the, the threshold of 57538 yep. is zero due back to the town. So is it because mm -hmm. The three-year average is greater, therefore you haven't exceeded that amount? Correct. Okay. Are you on board with this, Mary? Uh, Mary? What are you talking about? Okay. So then, so that's what you wanted to say about that, which mm -hmm. is the process. Right, and I, I believe the reason why um, there's two blank documents, so you have the narrative and the blank Excel spreadsheet, is yeah. because both of those sheets are going to be incorporated into the MOA as Exhibits. exhibit, I don't know what exhibit number we're up to, because the, the codified um, HAZMAT ordinance was also added to that, and that's, oh, that's right. exhibit that's right. what? So, is it exhibit or amendment or addendum or whatever? So whatever language you want to use, but these two sheets should be actually incorporated into the MOA. This is attachment A with the hazardous materials. Order. So these should be attachment B and C. So this should be B and C, which is in the red ink on our handout then? Right. I have just a question on timing. So your audit seems to be after our audit, and but it's usually in October or is it um, ever? It varies. Sometimes the field audit happens in September, sometimes it's October, but we're generally wrapped up end of October, beginning of November. Okay. At least, um, I mean, they haven't provided, well, they have provided a draft financial statement, so... Our you're, board you're, hasn't met yet to review that. You, well, but our auditor has provided the town financial statements, so mm -hmm. it doesn't include your numbers. I believe our auditor and your auditor have had conversation and they spoke about what that number was. Okay. So what would trigger that? I mean, you are, you are providing... What would trigger what? I'm sorry. The auditors to agree on what the number is. I don't think the auditors agree. It's... Well, you're saying they talked. I think Rick either reached out to Bill or it's... Bill reached out to Rick and said... Here's what? the number. Here's it was the more number. for the process, wasn't it? <clears throat> or we weren't having one auditor challenge the other auditor. Right. We were 
just agreeing on it a was process. Right. There was that initial agreement on process. Right. right. My main question is, going forward, when is that number going to be available? Once our audit has cleared QC and is final. And gone to the board. So it, it seems like there's a bit of a So a it will go to our board in November. Do we want to put a date, an annual date, a November 1st kind of thing, or? I think November 1st would be tough because our board doesn't meet till the 20th. Uh, Their audit varies year to year, just like anybody else's. You okay. shouldn't put a date on it. Okay. I mean, what, what difference does it make? None to me. I mean, if there's nothing near the town, then, then it doesn't matter. But if there's something near the town, then it's revenue to the town that we need to show. Yeah, the only, like you said, the only issue is knowing by budget time, which so takes us to... to the town, is that revenue would go to the previous year's budget? It would have to go to the... You wouldn't find it till... In the situation where we owed the town money? Um, well, that, that would be, be a good question for your auditor. And if you go back to, happened once, right? Yep, it did happen once. It happened um, fiscal year ending six thirty sixteen that we so gave the town that, back money. So I mean, it would just be an order to question who, what, what year they were right. it in, and how they do it since it's so late. But uh, maybe, maybe it, ha it would be in the current year, in which case it, it, it's okay. They probably do it in the current year, and then when they come in for the following year's audit, they do a prior period adjustment. Um, I just want to make sure I'm on the same page as the language. The three-year average is not including the fiscal year. It's not the, the prior three. Not the end, but it's the fiscal year of the year that ended. So the, I'm, six, the 2018 FY18 appropriation is part of that's one of the three years in calculating the surplus. It didn't read that way. That's why I wanted to clarify it. It's the second paragraph. Um, on which page, Matt? Um, page two, two, fourth paragraph. The balance of this fund calculated each year as indicated in Exhibit A shall not exceed 10% of the average operating appropriation for the town to CVFRS for the three prior fiscal years, not the current fiscal year plus two prior. Well, why would you compare your performance in FY18 to 17, 16, and 15? You, the, the interpretation and the process has always been that it's the year. It's well, a rolling, rolling, it's a rolling three years, three. including the I can current. think of a couple reasons, but. But it's not including the current year. So I think when, when this was written, because the calculation is occurring in FY19 for mm -hmm. FY18, that's why it said prior years because it's actually 18. Because we're in 19. Because we're in 19 right now. Well, I understand that, but I think the reasoning behind not using that current fiscal year is there's a considerable amount of decision making that goes on on using the operating reserve fund during a given fiscal year. So, uh, which is at the discretion of of CVFRS to use for operating expenses. So I think siloing the behavior of the three pre prior fiscal years has a mechanism of not using that as a free piggy bank during then, the fiscal but year. But comparing your performance, it's comparing apples and oranges at that point. I don't understand any comparison. It's just a mechanism for determining what size the cap of that fund should be. I don't think it's a comparison. It's just. So what are you saying? The um, that it, the last fiscal year should be, that should be used. It should be the previous. The seventeen in this case, two thousand seventeen. It reads the three prior fiscal years to the fiscal year that the calculation is being made for. That's how I read it. We're talking about that was, figuring that out was what to do good. with the. But I'm in. The, but with, we're in nineteen now, though. Well, where we are now is not where people have to make a decision. So at the end of a fiscal year, the audit is done on the books. They have to make a calculation. That calculation, to me, reads, let's look at the three prior fiscal years, not the year that just ended. I, I get it. You can't do it till the day after. But um, a similar thing happens at the state level with uh, unemployment calculations. Uh, those are done based on a 60% average 
of the best three of the last five quarters, not including the most recent quarter. So there's always, it seems to be, there always seems to be a break between the most recent expenditure and disbursements based on. But another way to look at it is that then the three-year rolling average would not have the benefit of, of a full year's worth of more contemporary inflation-adjusted operating expenses either. And, and the other thing I would say is that in the, in the couple of years I've been involved with board meetings, and particularly focusing on the finances, I honestly cannot remember once where some decision was made on an expenditure <coughs> based on kind of, oh, you know, by the way, let's, let's look and see what we have in the surplus. I don't remember. I really don't remember. At the anything. end of the year is a scramble to bring us to the budget as close to prop as we physically can and not exceed it. There's always things that we're putting off. Um, there's things that have surprised us through the years. That's why the surplus was built, such as wages, overtime, insurance increases. Turbos going on ambulances. Blo blown ambulances. Unforeseen expenses, right. But um, the way we looked at it before, it's the surplus that is there now is for this current year. It's a surplus if something goes wrong over this current year. And that's why we always use the prior year beforehand. And I can tell you, I look, I'm not there to raid the surplus. I like it there for emergencies. It's See, yeah, well, and, and well, the Matt's example. What I'm saying is it's not taking away the surplus. Mm -hmm. What he's saying is, is that it's the, the calculation of the, of the cap on the surplus mm -hmm. yeah. is, is adjusted to the previous three years, excluding and, the and last the year. Right now is for this year. So the previous three years would be last year. What's so I, I, I would point you year. back to the, uh, the narrative document. What's in the document surplus plan? is for this year. What gets put into the surplus if there was an under bridge uh, rather than a deficit is for a future year, maybe five years from now. Who five knows when? Now, it's not necessarily sure. always going to be used the next year. That's why it's a reserve fund. Okay. But the idea of, I think, you know, I, I guess going back to your point about missing a years of, of inflation, you know, a lot of that comes during the budget season when we talk about inflationary pressures. Uh, we're looking at that for the cost of living adjustment. You guys are looking at that uh, as far as um, fuel expenditure inflation. And that's budgeted in, not... But we're also budgeting um, 18 months in advance. Right. I mean, everyone is. And I, I think what I've seen from a fiscal position is Fire and Rescue has done a great job in the budget season of keeping the budget requests uh, in line with inflation um, and also done a good job at um, not running deficits, you know, to the next paragraph's kind of structure. In the five years I've been here, I haven't seen a request for um, an additional appropriation to cover a deficit more than 10%. Right. So I think the mechanism has worked this way. You know, I, I need to kind of hear a strong argument well, be interesting to, to, see, to change it. It'd be interesting to see, you know, to, going to the three prior years, if you will, uh, not including the current, um, what the impact would be on the numbers. I, don't, I have no idea. Yeah, I was just looking. But the, the analogy of... The Delta's uh, about $1,000 and then 10% of that. Right, but you should be able to just take the last number, right? Actually, it would the be one 50, just, 50, the 54, one just above 177 it. compared to the 53,268. So take it, if right. we... So it would still be net to the town of zero. But to your point, though, Matt, to your sense. point, though, yeah. the yeah. auditor approved the narrative, both your auditor and my, not my, our audit, our auditor and your auditor, and I would think that they would have been the ones to um, pick up on whether or not it should be the current, the language that is in that land. Read that. Here? No, in the, the framework. It talks about how... <clears throat> Reserve fund balance is based on the three most recent fiscal years, immediate prior year, and two preceding town appropriation. Right. Who wrote that? The audit. 
that was originally done by our auditor, but shared with Rick, and Rick has signed off on it as well. Because that that is your measuring stick for the year. But, just but they're not ahead. they're not making policy. So this yeah. is a little we bit in conflict. Right. You say this is in conflict then? Yeah, I'd say it's a misread. Um, so what would you? I mean, you got to put this one together. Here. Yeah, you have to put the auditor's comments or uh, the I mean, auditor's uh, description in the in here. Yeah, I would just ask Rick if he reread it. Does he still read it that way? Based on the only other the only other point I would make is your your comparison, your analogy with the unemployment data that I guess Montpelier uses or whatever, because you're referring to quarters. Right, as opposed to a year. A year is a lot meatier, carries a lot more weight, in my view, than a quarter. Um, and uh, so, I mean, what was it, three out of the last? Five, five. not included, so it's actually going back quarters. six quarters. The quarters, right. But again, it's a seasonal issue where people are working 90 hours a week yeah. for two and a half of those quarters. So then that's where it's spread over a year and a half period. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I'm just doing a cursory look at the delta of if we took from 49 to 57 or from 54 to 62, um, you yeah, know, you're talking a few, four or five hundred dollars this year. And so I guess in the scheme of things, I just read it differently. Could we extract the sentence from the framework and put it in here? and then the words can be exactly the same. The sentence that I just read, reserve fund balance based on three most recent years, um, I think it would fit in the first sentence of paragraph number four. Oh, well, they would have to replace the, sen just say, the sentence you where could, it says we, their we prior fiscal year. Yeah, we could strike prior. Right, so it reads CVFRS. Yeah, for the three fiscal years. Oh, just years. Re refer to attachment B is another way. Yep, so. What did you say? say? You could strike prior. So it's read CVFRS for the three, four, and strike the. So CVFRS for three fiscal years, and then okay. parentheses insert what the auditors wrote immediate prior year and two preceding. Okay. I guess that would do it. You're okay with that? And that describes the three years? Yep, me per year and two year proceeding. We had some other, mostly through Patrice's careful readings, some other language suggestions for, for potential amendments. Uh, uh, not big meaty stuff, but anyway, yeah. Quick one on the calculation. Is this going to become an official document? Yes. It's, it's, right. going, to be the, it's yes. going to be the exhibit C, so I think. Line 7 on the left column. Uh, it just needs to be edited out L3 less L6. Gotcha. It's correct on the right side. Oh. Uh, can this Mary have this paper? You have that in um, a Word document, so you can update that, Dean. Uh, I think this is Excel, right? So it's, yeah. So it's net income. Yeah, the word less, right? So on line seven, uh, change yeah. the L1 no, to L3. Yeah. Oh, oh. Oh, Also, should line nine, line nine is referring specifically to line seven. Mm -hmm. So it should just read net income, or line seven should read net change. It is the net change. I'm saying those should read the same if they're the same line. Your, the net change. your net income is your net change. 
you're comparing. You're basically restating like so line. restating a different definition. That income is net change from seven. Because the line seven could be a deficit. So it wouldn't be income if it's a deficit number. It would be, it's the net change that you're looking for in the calculation. Is it net change on line seven? Why, why, why? Is it saying net income on line seven? Why do you have to say the same thing? It's because same revenue thing. less expenses is your net income. Even if it's negative. So then it, and line nine. Could read net well, income. I, you know, if you want to go there, I would actually separate them and make that a separate table then and start over and say the MOA reserve balance as of 630XX and then the net change and remove line 8, 9, and 10. It's a, it's a separate calculation. <coughs> it makes it so you can do it on Excel, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Just makes it so you can do it on your computer box three, four, five equals this, and so you need to input it for the next calculation. So, what are we doing? We're going to change the whole. I'll do whatever is the will of the boards. Do you want to change or you? I think it's just semantics. Yeah, let me argue about the semantics only. Look. Well, I think that what should be done is do, to do a net, net income and then in parentheses do loss and then do the same thing down below, just make, the, you know, make them the same. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking about every year this will be presented to select boards. Filled out, right. So I just am looking for people who are volunteer basis, not necessarily like a us. lot of... <laughs> I mean, I've been here long enough to see the budgets that I understand them, but, and to go through enough annual audits, but someone's first year, I, I just try and make these simple documents to read. Uh, I guess it's... Shouldn't the three-year average be a specific line? I mean, three, or 10% or rather, 10% of the... That would make it easy to compare. Oh, there should be a line in the calculation for the three-year advertising. That's 10 a good, of the three That's a good input. <coughs> so make that line 11 and then make due to the town <coughs> line 12? Is that, is that, I mean, I don't know how all the... Edition works. The ten percent of the three year average, Tracy, so I'm understanding that line in the graph. Mm -hmm. Each of those lines is actually an average of three years. Yes. It's not ten percent so, of that year. Well, you have three different columns. Dean to the so the Fiscal year is your furthest column on the left. The next column, which is the amount, that's the appropriation. I can recall that, rename that appropriation. So the next so column is the three-year average, so that is the current, the fiscal year of the line and the three prior. So for 2018, if you took 557, 139, 557, 215, and 611, 812, and average them together, you'd come to 575, 388. And the furthest column on the right is the 10% of the three-year average. So if you take 575, 388, 67 times 10%, you come up with 57, 538, 87. Right. So that is there, mm -hmm. as far as not you don't mind, it's just not immediately clear. Do you want a line in the uh, calculation for that? Or is it I thought we just talked about that as adding a line there that says three-year average. You're going to add a line in. Is that what you just said? Right. So what I thought we were doing is 
line 11 would become something that says three year average. Yep. There'd be a line and in line this year's it would automatically reference the 57 538. Yep. It would pre-populate that. And then line 12 is old line 11. It, it's still an if statement that says if line 11 is right. greater than line 10, then there's amount due to the town. If not, it's zero. Okay. So we're going to call this Exhibit B, uh, Dean? Uh, this, I think, is actually C, the uh, written long, the, the framework, which is it all written out, is, yep. is B. Okay, then, so the calculation is Exhibit C? Right. Okay, and Exhibit A is the ordinance we did on spill. Uh, it was right. Attachment A for the Hazardous Materials Ordinance. Right. Oh, uh, it's called Attachment. So, so these would, can stay A and B then. So these can these would be attachments B and C. So I, oh, you want to make them attachments to be consistent? Yeah, to be consistent. Yeah. Okay. I understand the town's accounting side of this, but from CVFRS's, just so I get this right in my head, line ten that has a a blank fiscal year, that would be the fiscal year that just ended. And at the top of the document, the CVFRS surplus calculation would match line 10. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at the, the master, they all have XXs. So the year that you're doing the calculation, the title at the top would be the same as line 10, and it would be the immediate prior fiscal year to that. Right. So then on the CVFRS books when you reconcile because you're putting this money retroactively into it's done via a journal entry and it's posted as of 6 30 so the one that i do this month will be 6 30 18. how much time do you have to do that piece to make those adjustments just before your final audit gets done yes yeah, yeah. so uh, well, I mean, the MOA I won't do until the audit's final, but all, all the other adjustments are done prior to the final audit. I'm just trying to figure out the timing of... We would want to show it in the same fiscal of that. year as the town's revenue. Is that what you're saying? No, I'm just wondering how CBFRS is accounting for this, so the next year... So it's, it's a balance sheet adjustment. Right. So if you ran our balance sheet, you would see... So actually, I have... That's up until FY18. So if you notice, those are all the adjustments to the balance sheet. So the opening and then the net change, there's that word again, um, each year. And you notice all those dates are 630 of whatever the, the fiscal year Does that make sense to you? Yeah, I guess what I'm, um, I guess I'm not trying to wrap my head around is in the event that there's a surplus that isn't captured into the reserve fund, that adjustment is done after the fiscal year. You're going to have to parse out uh, an expense of a surplus that's returned to the town. Is that of right. that operating? And that, and that, is that, that would that, be done. We would write you a check. Which fiscal year is that done? That would be done in the current fiscal year. Okay. So that's the only thing that's actually, so then when it comes time for the current fiscal year, you're going to show That's, an expense. No, that would be that prior period adjustment that happens okay. in the subsequent. So in the audit and come next budget cycle, <laughs> we won't be seeing an expense in the following Correct. fiscal year of us receiving money back from CBFRS. That's kind of where I'm yes. wondering. Okay. Yeah. So that, <laughs> <laughs> that the 10%, anything above the 10% didn't cost the town as, a, as an increase in your budget. So you're okay? You yeah. wanna, I know you had a couple of small things, but things take time. I was thinking we ought to take a mo do a motion on this change since we're 
We got it. There's, there's one other change. Really small? Before, yes, it yeah. is small. Okay. So the, the paragraph before the one we've been dealing with. On the <laughs> framework or the MOA? Um, on the MOA itself. Yeah. So it would be the third paragraph on that page. Yeah. Where it says town funds appropriated for the services and not expended by CDFRS in the same fiscal year have... shall become the property of CDFRS, the operating surplus, and shall be contributed to a CDS. FRS operating reserve fund. Yeah. We do not maintain a separate bank account because we post it to the balance sheet. So I would like that verbiage changed, replace contributed to posted to a reserve balance sheet account, which is the practice we've been using. Posted to a reserve balance sheet account. Okay. Yes. So there's a separate account on the balance sheet that that money resides in. That's well, it, it's identified there, so it's not sitting in a separate bank account because we have had prior conversation about this, that if I were to open up a separate bank account, I'd be transferring monies back and forth, back and forth, just to cover cash flow. Because there are some items, sheet? pardon me? Do we get that balance sheet in our financials monthly? Um, it doesn't change but once a year, and it's in the audited report. Could we get it? You're okay with that? Yeah, I think if Mary is. That's where it shows up, then. It'll be there. I guess. Oh, wait. I, I had another uh, piece on that. I think it's important to change the beginning of that sentence. Town funds. Uh, yeah, to read all or a portion of town funds appropriated annually for the services and not expended. It's possible that. That three year at, that the fund is capped and there was a surplus, so then all of the that surplus that year would get returned. I just want that. So the word was all or a portion of town funds appropriated annually because it's a, about the annual appropriation, not a cumulative appropriations. Where's the word annually go in after town Af funds? Uh, after appropriated. After appropriate. Okay. All or a portion of town funds appropriate annually for the services. Okay. So then your motion to on this on this discussion up to this point was just related to the surplus because there there was another couple of small uh, and frankly we're over way over our time and there are other people coming in. These, huh? are, these are easy. <laughs> Page three. Uh, well Mary has a question on what we're talking about, yes? So wasn't the, weren't we supposed to be going through the MOA line by line, beginning to end? Yes, that's right. So why aren't we doing that? And it seems like now we've got the surplus uh, calculation of the surplus okay. ironed out, and we could put that language in there. And then, make, like, why can't we just go back to the beginning and just, just go right straight through it instead of doing this where, you know, <coughs> says, oh, well, I, I want to change this, and somebody else wants to change that, and we go to page three, and we go to page six, and because I thought the whole process was going to be beginning to end. So I hear you. Let's, we've got this done. What we've got on the table now, <laughs> let's approve it. And then we'll have to meet another time and do what Mary said, go through your November of last year email and those things we haven't captured. But this is such a major one. I think we ought to take move on this, get it done, and then we'll have a, another. This will be a, an updated, whatever the update. I don't know how you, this will be. Today we would do Amendment 4, the one we're looking at is 3, and we'll meet at another time and go through line by line for the other issues. Otherwise, we'll never get this done. We're so current on this. So with the changes that we've achieved up to this point, yep. we're going to need to, uh, we're going to need to get a copy of those because okay. our membership needs to, and needs to vote on them as well. So. Okay, I'd like to have us vote on what we've just done as amendment as amended and it'll be in the R minutes and then you got half of the equation done. And then you will go through it and then we have issues that haven't been resolved yet, we can do it at a later date. 
Yeah, I mean, I think what Mary said is what we had originally discussed. Right. And, and but it's such a lengthy process. I mean, this is a major is. milestone just doing this calculation. Yeah. It's not complex, but we debated it for two or three years. We're ready. Does anybody want to make a motion? What if we decide to call these? Uh, they're called attachments B and, and C. Attachment B and C. Make a motion to approve the agreement between the Town of Charlotte and Charlotte Volunteer Fire and Rescue Services, Inc., incorporating the Third Amendment. This will be the, f oh, in the red, this, is this the third or the fourth? Yes, third. This is the Third Amendment, okay. Uh, for the amendments uh, as presented in the draft and agreed in discussion. Uh, to include attachment B and C. Okay. Okay. So I think we've captured that. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Well, I'm not opposed. <laughs> I just want to sign a doc or approve a document as a whole. That's not the Did you oppose or do you I'm, I was for it. So it's four, and your position is? I just want to see the document. Well, that's, we're having a vote. I know that. We're yes. having a vote. So I'm abstaining from Abstaining. It. Okay. So we have an update, and I think what we need to do, you're going to talk to your folks. Hopefully you'll get back to us, see if you concur. Yeah. And then we need to schedule another time to go through what I would call the November or year we a November 17 email from Mary and go through those items we haven't already completed. Those and any, any new ones you come up with. And any new ones you come up with, right. And then this will be put through. in and I will. Well, this is going to be a complete, this is going to be a third amendment, what we just voted on now, with your concurrence. Uh, so are we doing this? Beginning to end or order of importance, as far as I think which it's amendments. order of importance. That's why I wanted to get it out of the way. Is that good for you guys? Yeah. Well, so, you mean after tonight? Yes. We start. The next. The next round. meeting is starting from page one, I think. Right. Yep. Yep. One by one. yep. Yeah. Is that is that okay? So we'll be reviewing the third of the amendment, beginning to end. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I believe we're back in front of you November. FY20 budget? Uh, 13th, Tuesday the 13th. And that's preliminary, preliminary, because our members would not have seen what we're presenting to you yet. Um, on yes. a motion we just approved, could you do a friendly modification and authorize the chair to sign it? Yes. Okay. So that's Everybody have to okay with that? <laughs> you can say. Okay, so we're good. Thank you for your patience. So after our members meeting on November 20th, you yep. want us to inform you or Dean that the members have approved it so yes. that you can then sign the document. Yes. Okay. And if we don't have mutual agreement, then we have to go over it again, I guess. I mean, we're not, we're just trying to make progress. We're not right, trying to ramrod. Our members only meet once a quarter. Okay. So the next meeting would be November 20th. So Frankly, no, I don't think no we're... Action on our, I don't think we're going to get through the line by line for a period of time. No, I'm even saying talking about okay. what was talked about tonight needs to be approved by our membership because so the be board. Before. Right. That's fine. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. See you in November. You will, or sooner. Okay. Are there any adjustments to the agenda, Dean? There are two items uh, I'd like to at least. Um, add for acknowledgement or, or discussion or decision. Um, the uh, advertisement for a minutes taker. Yep. And the change to the HRA administrator, a health reimbursement arrangement administrator. Um, I think you can do the ad for the minutes taker at the end. Um, I'd like to do the HRA administrator. <coughs> Um, while Mary's here, perhaps just after management discussion and analysis? Are you? Maybe right after the budget. <laughs> okay. So are there, is there, and you're suggesting we do it okay. That's just about the 815 item. Okay. Are there any public comments? 
Okay, the next item is the purchase of the, com of the computer server. So Tech Group has came in, talked with Mary, Christina, and myself. We told them, you know, fine-tuned what we wanted, and they provided a proposal. We reviewed it again, and they refined it again, and uh, came up with a quote, which includes hardware licenses and um, labor. Uh, 14,394. So can I back you up a little bit, Dean? So back in, um, when we made decisions proceed as we have, I just want to make the point that we had four bids. Yes. And you have a spreadsheet. And we took tech group's bid, and they gave us a range. And now this is the finalization of that range. And in fact, if I read your number right, were they a little bit below their range, is that right? Right. 14,394, where their range was, the low end was 14,565. I just want to make sure everybody recognizes we went through the purchasing policy process, and all this is a refinement of the of what we approved earlier. Correct. Okay. So, somebody want to put a motion on the table to approve this, and we can discuss more if you'd like. Make a motion to uh, approve the <coughs> quote from Tech Group on the town <coughs> server. For $14,394 plus a monthly fee right. of $175. All right. Is that seconded? Seconded. Does anybody have to sign this or are we good with it? Uh, I think once you approve it, it's a computer respond. Okay. I'm recusing myself from yep. the vote. Okay. So, like I said, we this is just the final number we agree, agreed with this approach and this price range. Anybody have any questions? Ready to vote? Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 And you abstain. Okay. So we'll go in order, Dean, the uh, budget reviews? Yep. Senior Center, welcome. Wow. So you want to just summarize for us, uh, Beth or Wally, uh, whatever works for you? Well, this is a second or third iteration, uh, there were some questions raised by uh, Dean, and we went back and made some revisions, and, uh, and uh, uh, our, our board has approved this uh, proposal uh, as presented up here. And you can go through uh, various items or have you ask questions, whatever is uh, appropriate. Okay, so we're looking at 2019-2020 year, 82,088 is the expense. Uh, that's, the, that's the net different. Oh, that's, that's what? The, that's the net. Um, oh, that's the net at the bottom line, got it. Oh, right, we have expenses 11,500, revenue 29,500. With a net expense to the town, eighty-two thousand zero eighty-eight. Um, so maintenance is down a couple thousand. What happened? Well, uh, 
we proposed 14,500 and, and Dean asked us to take another look at that. Um, the, the problem is that we're guessing about things that we don't know what are going to happen. We can tell you a couple of things that, that do need to be done and one of them is definitely in here. Um, all of the trim, the white boards you see around the senior center, uh, the material was a, a poor choice and it, a lot of it is delaminated, it's falling apart, the paint is flaking. <clears throat> uh, I don't know whether the architect uh, uh, specified something he thought was right, it wasn't, or whether the contractors, uh, uh, you know, uh, didn't fulfill what they were supposed to. But the fact is the material is poor and it's falling apart. <clears throat> Uh, we have, uh, a not, we do not have any quotes on it. We have an estimate from one of our board who's uh, quite familiar with, uh, with, with uh, building projects that it could cost $5,000. To me, it sounds a little high, but it's going to be what it's going to be when we get some quotes. <clears throat> there are a couple of other things lurking in the back which are not forecast in this. Uh, if we continue to have problems with water in the oil tank, we may have to dig it up and replace it. You remember this has been going on now for a while. It's okay at the moment, but <clears throat> if it has to come out and be replaced, we're talking about three, four thousand dollars probably. <clears throat> the last thing is, is really not ripe for much discussion. We're short of parking. We're desperately short of parking. Uh, but uh, aside from any big things that might uh, uh, come up that enable us to get a lot of space, apart from our grounds, there are two or three alternatives that would give us three or four spaces. And uh, that's not much, but and, and they cost a little bit because you're going to have to uh, change the landscaping and pave it and, and have no budgets, budgetary estimates. But it's something that if we don't find a big solution, we may have to try a couple of little solutions. So three or four spaces doesn't solve our problems, but every little bit is going to help. Uh, and the last thing is really not so much uh, an explanation about a question. Uh, is the senior center budget supposed to cover anything to do with the generator? No. Okay. Good. <laughs> Thank you. That's a good answer. All right, it's approved in the our town meeting. We're out for bids right now. Complete actually, installation. Actually, there might be. They run 15 minutes, usually 10 to 15 minutes every week, which is a small amount of propane. I don't think that will. I don't think that will. No. Uh, where is it going to be located? Uh, very close to the electric service on the west side of the building. OK. All right. Keeping it close to the service keeps the price down. Yep. That's uh, really the only uh, uh, other thing. <coughs> that, uh, there's one one item which has gone up, and that's uh, uh, supplies. And the big reason there is that we're now going to pay for the uh, water supply. Uh, mm -hmm. We've had bottled water now for quite a number of years uh, with a you know, big container and so on. That was donated by someone and that donation has gone. So that's about $800. Every year? Yeah. 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 Ongoing expense. So that's, that's the reason for that. Well, I noticed your, it looks like your 
revenue projections are up 18 percent, which is offsetting some of the increase in the expenses. Are programming picking well, up? Or? Uh, the, the, uh, the way we budget is we, we, our target is that the program revenues will equal or uh, exceed uh, the expenses. And so we, we budget them always the same. And uh, I think with one exception, we have met that target every year. Uh, and last year, the year we ended in, in June, uh, had a substantial increase uh, both in the revenue and the expenses. The programs were uh, bigger and, and larger, uh, which is a nice thing. It, it's, it's, it's doing more. Uh, uh, I don't know that there's an easy answer as to why, but sometimes when you got something good, you don't you don't poke at it. But, uh, <laughs> we do have a, a new director. Our, our previous director was uh, very successful, and very popular, uh, and we uh, got a new one in January. Uh, she's tried some new things, but uh, some of the old things did well too. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It causes a parking problem. <laughs> yeah, those are good problems. <laughs> well, it looks good. Um, uh, anybody have any other questions? Yeah. I think Mary noticed the custodial actual is oh. currently about 94. Or running to be about 94. I looked at your, I, I thought the custodian line might be a little bit low because I looked at at the, what we have, what has been paid for this fiscal year and I just extrapolating it out it, for the whole year, it's like, it would be at the rate that you're going right now, it would be about 9,400, so I thought maybe the 9,000 was a little bit low. low. Maybe maybe it just Okay. Good. So maybe we should maybe update just that. Yeah. To at least what Mary mentioned. Any other comments? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Parking. We're thinking about parking. 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 Always. parking that turns into a revenue. I was just about to say that. What about meters? My dad used to be a valley parker. You can get twice as many cars on. <laughs> it just takes a while to get them. Okay, recreation programs. Thanks, Wally. Really Thank you. Help me with the handouts now, so. I'm sorry to interrupt, but can you guys say your names for me? Yes, Nicole Conley. Thank you. Bill Fraser Harris. Okay, so what we have then? So you have your breakdown. Yep. Okay, so you'll have your expenses, your revenue, and then the capital fund. Then you'll have a recreation, um, basically revenue expense kind of breakdown of the programs, which looks like this. Yep. And then the other ones um, are quotes for the recreation software. Okay. And the final one, which I think Dean put in, was the surveys from the results from the, I sent a survey out to all the families that are participate in recreation, asking them their thoughts on the rec program. So those are the, the results that I, that I kind of got out of a couple weeks ago that I sent out. So. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Everyone was very likely to use it. <laughs> clear, clear message. Okay, so changes that should be brought out? Um, okay, let's see. So we kept um, beach, beach. beach wages the same. Yep. Um, we kept beach maintenance the same, um, except what we did is at the, I don't know, 
Mary created an extra um, budget line for water testing because now that um, I'm doing the testing of the drinking water, we thought it'd be best if we took it out of maintenance so we could see how much we're testing for um, the drinking water and then also the beach water. So we, so I just wanted to let you know that we are spending five hundred and eighty-two dollars approximately testing. So that's not in here right now, or? Well, she had added it. Um, she had added it to the the budget. Yeah, it's on the bottom of yours. Okay. So basically, it's at the bottom of the. Goes in the packet. Yep. Okay. Let me just see. It's right there. So if you look right, right yeah. on your sheet, right at the bottom, see the handwritten note. Uh huh. Right there. There you go. Yep. Mine's out of date. Yours is more covered. Got it. So and then last year. We had budgeted sixteen hundred dollars, so we're saving eleven $1 hundred dollars by just going through me testing. Um, but what we did do is we kept the beach maintenance um, at thirty three hundred dollars because we are expecting just a couple of extra finishes with the beach hut that we're making for the beach attendants. Um, so the rec commission we discussed that um, just keeping that money as is. Um, we won't need to replace the men's toilet. Um, little things that, that come about um, at the beach. So I just wanted to let you know that even though it stayed the same, it didn't, we added the water testing at the bottom, so it's still, we didn't decrease that, just so you know. So I wanted to make sure you're aware of that. Um, mileage is the same. Now the Telephone, we went up, but that's just based on um, the average of what our phone bills it are is right now. So um, it's broken out into all departments. Then the recreation software, I don't know if you want me to pause and discuss that, or do you want to go through the whole budget first? I'll keep going on this sheet, I okay. guess, first. So then we have supplies at 1400 So that's, you know, all of the supplies for the beach and for recreation. So beach permits. Um, you know, any toiletries we need at the beach or any supplies that paper and whatnot I need here um, for recreation. Um, memberships dues are went up by $100. $250 is to pay for the Vermont Parks and Recs Association, so we were affiliated every year with them. Um, and $100 is just in case there's any conferences, um, you know, that, that come about. And the tennis courts, I don't know, Bill, do you want to touch upon the tennis courts? Sure, yes, we tested, we um, uh, did not have any uh, work done on the tennis courts last season. Um, the maintenance company um, basically said, you're too small for us to come and do, it's less than, it was less than $1,000, the quote. So we have, they've guaranteed that they're gonna be here first thing in the spring and um, they have also said that we're not sure that we can now do increased crackage that is probably going to happen this winter for the same quote that they did last year. So we allocated an extra $200. That filler work that you were telling us about months ago? For the cracks, you had some filler that you the, were... Yes, Greg and I tried two years ago now to fill the cracks ourselves, and we're not successful in that. So the crack filler works. It will not work for more than a year. So that's why we kept the money. For so they would come in every year and top off what's this been what done. We, and this is what we discussed at the last budget meeting was the need, and we went, went into some length, and I will speak to it again when we come to the capital uh, fund of the tennis courts. And so at the moment, last year we agreed to fund the maintenance annually, the maintenance of the courts annually, with the, the knowledge that we were funding a capital fund to, for the long-term uh, repair of the courts. And part of that calculation that we looked at last year is taking out $1,000 a year with a 25-year warranty on the new courts uh, is something to remember 
when we're funding the capital fund mm -hmm. because we're offsetting an annual expense for 25 oh, years. Oh, I see. That goes away when we put the new courts Yeah, in. because these courts would be warranted. Yep. Um, so then the garbage remains the same, the skating rink uh, remains the same. Uh, we went down a little bit in the beach electricity. Um, everything pretty much stays the same until we get to the rec expense, um, which I, I've done a lot. I do a lot of data keeping surveys, um, trying to, you know, predict what our revenue is going to be and what our expenses are going to be in there. They vary, I've noticed, from every year based on, you know, thinking last year I had only two basketball teams, um, when years before I've had five to six basketball teams. So it all depends on um, how many, you know, kids are in each grade and um, their participation and what they want to participate in and what the interest is. Um, you know, in the winter they're skiing and snowboarding, so that's a competition that we're coming against the rec program. So um, within my expenses and especially with my revenue as well, you'll see that I have changed them um, to me, I would say drastically because what I did was is I kind of took an average of, of how much money um, we're bringing in and how much I'm spending. So I decreased the um, rec expenses by about, you know, $4,000. Um, and then I also, which means then I also decreased um, the recreation revenues to $60,000. Um, Just 60, 60,000. Yep. Okay. So, you know, the difference between the, between the two of them is really, you know, um, right. Um, and also, like, fifth, so about seventeen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000 still we're netting um, with that, with the difference. So it's, the net is still remaining the same. It's just getting the numbers to be closer to where I feel like it's achievable and not as much, you know, far fetch. Um, we have great ideas for the beach this year to try to bring food trucks, um, you know, maybe once or twice in the summer um, and generate revenue there and have more activities going on at the beach as a way to, to bring in additional revenue so it's not just kind of looking at it as recreational programs only. Um, so that's kind of our next route of, of revenue gathering. Um, and then I think... The, and then the water testing, um, it's going to be its own budget line. So that's what we're looking at for expenses. Um, oh, and then I'm trying to, the beach, I think I skipped over the site plan beach improvements. Um, I, I talked with Bill and um, in with Mary just trying to remember that. Because so I, beach yeah, I don't remember that discussion, so I don't know if it was just me. Neither of us remember that conversation um, right. with regards to how that item got in there. Here. It was not while we were at a budget meeting. So maybe you guys at some well, point. So, I mean, I've had people talk to me about a, a plan, separate pickleball and changes to the children's play area and maybe parking different. I mean, was that a plan that could be laid out that... You want the professionals to draw something. Huh? You all came up with the $2,000. Yeah, I think I remember Fritz mentioning it. Especially and you wanted a professional parking lot rearrangement drawing of the beach improvements. It's basically and you just concept threw that designs, number out there. But being done professionally for what that capital fund could be doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and that would be within this. So how would the layout look, or maybe a couple of concept designs you could get for $2,000 for a new tenant core? You think, you think we can get a couple of site plan concept designs? Concept which are designs. usually, no, not necessarily even to scale. I mean, kind of to scale, but usually they're bubbly, artistic looking, concept designs. Engineers? Are you saying the word engineer? Because uh, that's not going to no, help. More layout, right? Yeah, yeah more layout. It would probably be under the work of a landscape architect. Maybe? Landscape architects or do that. Even landscape planner? designer might take it up. Would take a aerial and come up with a plan. I mean, you're trying to sell the public 
changes to the beach and and they don't have anything to look at. What's in showing a description? Three-dimensional layouts of playgrounds and stuff last year. Yep. Is this a takeoff on that and different there's options? There's pocket change in the playground, and change in the parking. Mm -hmm. Parking might be yeah. just. If you throw people dollar numbers, we need to pay this to pay the parking. We're going to do this to the playground. And the taxpayer saying, well, can I see it? Also, since the idea was to fund the capital fund over a few years, this concept design could be brought as something to discuss at town meeting and people could have input of, well, why do you have the parking there? And it's not a cold, hard and fast presentation three years from now. We're like, this is what the architect said it's going to be and everyone in that town kind of just bristles. So this is kind of like there's some money here to generate a concept to then hear what people think at town meeting. Um, right, because well, last year we presented and the article passed. For thirty thousand. So are we, are we then then now for the capital fund moving forward the the money that we're asking for, we want to set up a presentation with the finalized or a design of what we're looking at, and then we're going back for. We so I don't think we've had discussions. I've missed a couple of meetings, but I didn't see them on the agenda about do how to move forward with continuing to fund the capital fund. Do we? Yeah, that has, I assume you're going to talk about that yeah. recommendation too. Right. So we, the board yeah. kind of has two mechanisms. One is to decide as a board that the town wanted this and to add that into the budget cycle, which we do with other funds. The other would be to have it be another, a, a, a new you, article. Just like last year, was like it 30,000 we put in or? Right, yeah. And do that, I mean, I thought the plan last year was to do this for a, five-year period or more. Yeah, I mean, I have my preference, but as far as planning, budget planning, I think this is the time to start having that discussion and hearing people's opinions and... Um, Can we just go back to that line item of $2,000? <laughs> yeah. What you actually want us to do so that we can be really clear um, about where we stand with... with Because we've got quotes now to do the parking lot already, like we were to planning on going... It. Pardon? You have quotes to design or to... To it. do it. To do it. To do it. Right. So um, maybe it's, I mean, is it necessary? I mean, you're the, we were trying to be helpful. Sounds like to we have don't a, want a grand concept design of uh, the beach. Well, the 40, so $4,500 for this year has gone in, and then there's a $4,500 that was agreed upon to go in next year, and that's for the expansion of the parking lot to put in bocce and batonk and to upgrade this softball field. So that money had been that money had been agreed upon, and then so because we took those projects out because we came to you with lots of projects, and then we took those small ones out for that money that was already gone in um, to pay for those, and then the projects, the big projects was the sport courts and the um, playground. Playground. Um, and so then that was that presentation for that thirty thousand. So I'm wondering if the site plan then is for specifically for the tennis court in the playground or if you would like to see the ball the softball field in there so that we just cover everything um i think it's to show what you want to do in a pictorial mm -hmm. form you have all these ideas you've yeah. got quotes for part of it i don't know how you get a parking thing if you don't know that you're going to have this this and this maybe someone would say well you need more parking I mean, you, you don't want to piecemeal a grand scheme and find out, well, we didn't have big enough parking. Well, we should have put electrical in for the lights for the sport courts when we did the tennis court, but now we got to do it over again. So that stuff, if all of the wishes over the future that the capital is going to pay for mm -hmm. should be in a, in a pictorial form, somebody can think ahead and make sure everything's planned appropriately. And who would we ask to do uh, that? I, I could come with a few suggestions. So my wife is, um, has been spearheading the um, Oak Ledge for All right. Universally Accessible mm -hmm. Playgrounds in Burlington. They started as an independent nonprofit with a vision and then got Burlington Parks and Rec to, to partner with them mm -hmm. um, and agreed to site it at Oak Ledge. So what they did is they went to a playground designer. He's in Ithaca, relatively famous person. And there's a few, there's one in Boston that they ended up doing an RFP and they won the contract for the, for the playground design. But um, 
he basically, they basically approached him and said, you design playgrounds. We have some seed money for a concept design, maybe two, that show basically different flow options of the components of the beach that you're looking for expansion and existing to interact with each other. Um, and down the road, you know, we're accumulating money in a reserve fund. In two or three years, we're gonna need detailed. So it's kind of a, a carrot and they give a relatively inexpensive concept design or two um, so that the town has something to work with in hopes that they'll be considered for the RFP for the big plan, which is but usually are, are more than Are they gonna do a concept plan that envisions the whole beach, including the ball field, the tennis courts, the playground, the building, yeah, I think it's, it's just as easy to draw that as to zoom in and draw a tennis court and draw a playground next to it. I mean, but a site plan would start with the property, property lines, property lines and the, where everything is currently to scale, and then you'd have an overlay perhaps or any number of ways of depicting phase one, ten, you know, Parking lot phase two sport courts are going to go here, and you can add so you can fit everything in there. And it could be vision A, vision B. You know, maybe there's a vision B that has a gazebo and a smaller softball field or an auxiliary parking system. You know, so you can kind of, I think you could probably get two concept designs for $2,000 if it's kind of presented as we're looking to get a concept design so that we can come back to you with a. The yeah. I mean, once detail. you get a site plan, then you can move things around on it. You know, it's like furniture in your living room. What if I want to put the couch here, put it over here? But if it's, you know, cut out of square, my that's my a side of the only regret at this particular stage is we just lost a year from you guys deciding that we needed a, and I'm not being critical here, but neither one of us were ever advised of a design plan review. I mean, I don't think you've lost anything because we're trying to collect the money to implement what this design hasn't been put together yet. We're trying to, like, the, the money that was put in the annual report, maybe we do it again. So we're left, next few years, we're trying to collect some money, and then we could implement phase one of this layout. So I don't think you've really lost anything. You wouldn't have started until July anyway, according to the budget year. Well, our planning certainly could have. We've had yeah. a number of meetings, and we've got up concepts, and we've had quotes, and we've had a lot of well, a considerable amount of effort gone into. Well, we don't want you to go backwards. We were trying to be helpful. I yeah, think. I didn't see any of this uh, forestalling any of the capital improvements that you're already working on either. Well, okay. I think they would have been like to have been conversation is what's being said and that the two thousand dollars that was placed into their budget was done um, apparently when when like after the fact after they presented their budget and then the select board said hey let's do this and it would have been nice for them to be part of that conversation so they would have known at the moment it was placed in the budget that this is what's expected and we can start you know even though the we're only in March of 2000 18 and the we know what is expected and on July 1st of 2018 we we are working towards this because this is what the money was for it's a, a, that is what I think there's like to know it was there yes and the description of which you're describing like what you guys had in mind you know, as to what we needed to do. Because we've sat at meetings now and described, okay, we want to improve the parking lot. We have nine people at the table. We all have come up with ideas as to how to improve the parking lot. We have the same conversations with the tennis court and the playground, et cetera. And if you guys don't want to move forward with anything until you have a concept slash site plan, then we have lost quite a bit of time. Well, I think the... What I'm hearing, the differentiation being is, I never heard any desire from the select board to stop the capital improvements that have already been budgeted and discussed at your meetings. But for the one that were, the big one, that we're saving up for, 
this would incorporate that. So maybe in this concept design between now and July 1st, if someone can incorporate what the Recreation Commission has already come up with for changes that are going to be happening uh, into what the concept design would be for the whole um, area, including the new tennis court and the new playground. And that would be informed by the discussions that you've already had. Yeah, I wouldn't go backwards. Use the planning that you've already done, that the nine of you agreed on, let's say the parking, and include that in this overall plan. I wouldn't go backwards. I, I can't imagine we just did this on our own. I mean, do you think the five of us sat here and said that 2,000 for plans surprises me? I, I, I think it was like the very last meeting before okay. we approved I think it. Was it. When, right? Like I said, you're gonna try to convince the taxpayers right. to spend this money and you're going to tell them that a commission of nine people worked on it without anything to see. Okay. Well, so right. I think if somebody looks and says, you know, this is what our, you know, our five-year view of the beach is going to be, mm -hmm. this is the parking you talked about, this is this, then it's a lot easier for someone to see something and understand it than it is to take your word for it, you thought it out. Okay. Good. Um. Um, and then, so then going back to the recreation software, just before yep. we touch upon, um, so the, you know, we are at a point where a lot of people are using the internet, um, and currently in, I don't know, every, I would say almost um, all of the rec departments that I work with <coughs> are online, meaning that anyone who signs up for any sort of a rec program can do it on their computer or on their phone. Um, there is the option of them to come in here uh, and I can help them set up their account. Uh, but they can sign up for whatever program they would like to sign up for and they pay for it with a credit card. And if they don't want to use the credit card because there's a 2% fee attached, convenience fee attached to that, then they can send a check or cash. Um, in the mail to us and then we can process it like we always have. Um, so I, there's three different quotes. The, the company that I picked, which is MyRec.com, is a local company. They're located in Killington um, and I, he's kind of given me a whole rundown of, of how their program software works. The other quotes um, are a bit higher and they're not in the area. Um, so that, you know, it can range from anywhere of you know, creating um, rosters to allowing coaches to email their the parents um, to possibly actually people can go on and buy beach passes and then the beach passes are mailed to their house. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities with it. It is expensive as a yearly fee of $32.95. Um, but I just, I think that as we're moving forward and parents have been requesting it, um, that I finally decided why not implement it here and um, see what your thoughts were. So just so I understand this, mm -hmm. they get two revenue streams, one from direct department and the other from processing the card fees? No, the credit card's company. The company that they use to outsource that, you know, collects the fee, that money goes to it's them. A pass so that through. doesn't. Their thirty two ninety five actually just goes to the company. And that's what they're using to? Yep. Um, What we looked at with uh, numerically, it's um, it's it's a big number, um, and it's also a, it could be considered a big number considering the number of children. But the number that we're dealing with, but the number of rec program, what was the the, the number of uh, participants in rec programs? We get about a lot, around two, uh, like an average of two thousand people that do a rec program right. a year. So it could be the same kid that plays, like does five different programs, or it could, you know, or it could be a family of three that does, you know, but they can go right on there and they can sign up and they can sign up all their kids in one shot. They're not, you know, we're saving paper. It's all on the internet, their contact information, everything we need. Um, and it collects data for us too. So if we want to know, you know, how many participants from you know this area or grade or age or gender were able to, to track that as well? But um, so it's an online registration. Mm -hmm. We've tracked all the kids, all the programs. Mm -hmm. 
and coaches and communication and accessible well. by the parents. Mm -hmm. That would expect you, the number of kids to increase. This is one of the things that we discussed, that if you make something that much more available <coughs> and accessible, you can probably depend right. on increased participation in that. But this quote takes you to increase revenues. I mean, this quote that you have, whether it's 50,000 or 100,000 or 200,000, it's all the same price. So the this software, allows for expansion. The software is the same. <coughs> well, I mean, we're not going to exceed. We won't. We'll stay, you know, nicely. I don't think that we'll be exceeding. If we stay with just our um, revenue, we won't exceed to the 3500 unless, you know, we're really. Oh, the price goes up $200. Sorry, it goes yep. up a little bit, yeah. Yeah. So, um, but, uh I mean, it's pretty, it's, the things that it can do is pretty great. It can also, um, it can be also a facility reservation. So as we move forward, if we have uses of the tennis courts, or if we have different events going on, we can put it on the calendar, or if there's parties, or if there's a bike race, we can put everything on that calendar and reserve it so that we know what's going on. Or if somebody says, oh, I want to have a picnic or something like that, they, it's already on the calendar. So they know, oh, well, somebody else having a barbecue or there's a reunion, we already, um, so it's... Will this be uh, accessible by coming to the town website or it's going to be a separate website that people need to... So they'll go to the town website and then they'll click on it and it's going to take them. So initially we won't really be using the website as much because everything we'll need will be in its own kind of portal, I guess you could say, all the information, all the rec programs. Um, we can still have information about the commission and the beach and stuff, but everything would be in its own little area. So the hyperlink on the, the hyperlink yep. on the website, the yep. website. Yeah, it'll just say my rec and you click on it and it goes right to it. So you've, I'm sure you've been on Essex's rec website, mm -hmm. but a lot of that scheduling is on the right. rec website. Yep. Is that integratable at some point or it's always going to be a, a blank link that then brings people into so it won't be able to be incorporated onto our website, um, but it's basically the best way to kind of feed it into, you know, what we need just because they have their own setup. Um, I mean, uh, Williston uses my rec, um, Hinesburg uses my rec, uh, Shelburne uses the Vermont systems. Um, they're quite pricey. Um, so, but we, you know, I've talked to Ray and he's really great and he said that he'd come in and, you know, if anyone had questions, but my hope is just really that it's just an ease of use. If someone's at 8 o'clock, you know, somebody's trying to sign up, they can just sign up, pay with their credit card. Um, and then I'd be working with Mary and Christina to kind of stream to make sure that we're make the money that's coming in is, you know, going through into the account. Uh, and then I guess that was my other question. What was, what's the relationship been like with this company so far? Everyone loves them. Um, they've actually branched out. You can click on the places that they work with. I mean, they work with people all the way, you know, in Washington, the state of Washington. So they're pretty, um, they keep growing. Uh, they're there 24-7 if you need anything. They come and they set everything up for you, um, anything you need. If there's something that you want to add, like we could add sponsorships to the side. So if we had companies that wanted to sponsor us, we could add that and that could help, um, you know, adjust the cost of the, the program. Um, it's kind of our own little site within, you know, our website. So I see 100% of those who took the survey. Right. I mean, not this. everyone. I will say not everyone filled out the survey, even though, you know, I emailed but them. But 100% would use oh, the yeah. online yep. recreation yes. uh, sign-up program. Yes. Also, do you know if, it's, if they're willing to change the agreement date to July, 1st of July? Yeah, this is old. Okay, good. This is this. Just so it matches yeah. our fiscal year. Yep. Oh, so the price may be a little different. No, it's going to be the same. Well, yeah, but on a, for the first year, because you're only going to need it for six months. When are you going to go online? Oh, this is for next year, though. Yeah. Okay, so it'll be July 1st of yep. next year. Yeah. Gotcha. Yep. yep. Um, but the people there, because I was just looking at it, and, you know, they have a P.O. box, not a physical address. Right, yep. the, you to get help, it's a uh, email info at. Mm -hmm. But you've talked to people; they're good. Um, yeah, they're good. Yeah. Um, I think they contact me more than I contact them. Nice. At this point. Cool. Um, and they're local, which I think is pretty neat. Yeah. Sounds good. Great. Now, is this just a single annual fee for for everything? 
So for the, there's no setup fee, but the, the $3,200 a yearly fee, basically kind of pay, paying for us to have the software um, for any tech support that we need. Um, when they do different updates, so as our technology is changing in different like firewalls, they have to update, um, and they they'll do that for us. So it's the thirty-two hundred is the annual fee, but other than that, we and they have a fine print under there. I think it's like a good it's a good sell. Yeah. Uh, I was just looking on the next page. It talks about the, is it. that is that a different. Is that the same company? company? Is that a, that's the different company. It's a different company. So if you have it, gotcha. it says the number two with a circle, it could be the other company. Gotcha. Yeah. Yep. That's a different one. Yeah. So is there any reason to break this out from recreation expenses, or does could it just be put into recreation expenses, recreation program? You want to put it right in, right? Right in the budget? Well, just separate line item, or as part of oh. rec expenses? And I think Mary wants to see a separate line item. I need a separate line item. It's already in your budget. Just so. Okay. So we should know. How much for yours? Yours is the one. Yeah. There it is, right there. Yeah, it's already in there on the updated one. That's good. Shiny. Okay. So capital fund. Um, just a little preamble. Hopefully you all participated in some of the uh, events that went on down at the beach this year. Um, we are, I think, greatly increasing traffic down at the beach. Our revenues are up. Um, and that leads to the plan that we have, the big plan, the big picture, and that involves the playground uh, and the tennis courts. I'm, I'm not sure if you need me to go through the tennis court issue again. I'm happy to do that. But the court, just, just to recap, the, <clears throat> the courts are cracked. They will continue to crack. We've budgeted a certain amount to, for crack repair annually. The playground, um, is uh, about 30 years old now, um, and we want to upgrade that. We have been approached by um, a local uh, foundation that is willing to donate $20,000 this fiscal year, so before December 31st, and another $20,000 as of January 1st, 2019. So we have been verbally promised $40,000. We, uh, we have two quotes in the range of seventy dollars to $78,000 for very preliminary plans for a new you know, we've, if you remember, we've talked about this for a number of years, ever since Deb Stone made a, an initial presentation years ago. Um, so this foundation wants to expedite that process. And um, what we have now, as of this fiscal year, is I believe 35,000 in our capital fund, or thereabouts, 34 something. Um, actually, maybe more than that, Dean, with the 4,500, if you'll help me out. 34,500, it's... Yeah, yeah 34,000 okay. in there, and okay. 34,500 would come in. Plus this 30,000. 30,000 hasn't been transferred in yet. Right, has not been transferred in yet. So, what we'd like to do is gratefully accept the donation that has been made available to us and use some of our capital fund to complete the project. The so donor, the state total was for that? Well, playground about? again, approximately $75,000. That's between the 70 and the 78, the two quotes that we have. Again, those are very preliminary. The, the, the donor wishes to be involved in the process. The two quotes that we have so far are for uh, playgrounds from several years ago 
proposals from several years ago. And one from last year. Yeah, one from last right. year, excuse me. Yep. So um, we think and the, we would like to be doing this maybe as soon as next spring. How do you, he's going to make a donation of, you have to spend the 20000 by December 31st this year, did I hear you say? No. He has the availability from his foundation to make a $20,000 donation this fiscal year. Calendar, calendar year. Calendar, 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 calendar year. Calendar year. Sorry. Yeah. Not our fiscal year. So, so yeah, you can roll that into a, a one time. You can make the donation. We can put it on our capital fund right. and uh, uh, proceed from there. So that's sort of, and, and this, this uh, the foundation has also made it very clear that they wish to be involved further in, 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 in the beach development. development. Um, as far as sport courts, pickleball, um, et cetera. So. All those uh, things on the plan that we're going to get. Pardon? All those things that are going to be on the plan. And right. That's where the, so I guess my question to uh, bounce off of that is, what was the commission's discussions with the foundation and the commission as far as the process here forward to get the town to say yes to that playground? The, the expedited playground construction. Was it going to be like a, a town meeting presentation? This is the new playground we're building this year. Uh, the trails have like, um, what do they call them? Like, uh, I'm blanking. They have like a public hearing where people come, and you know, someone says, "Well, I always wanted a pink swing," or uh, and so then you, the rec commission has an opportunity for input um, before you know shovels start turning earth over. You know what you could do? The, the money's in place. Will be in place is what you're saying. Maybe at town meeting, which will be early March. Talk about these options that are being planned, and see if you get some feedback. Because that would kind of get the get the, the town involved in. Sure. I mean, maybe, I think maybe even uh, advertise the the rec commission's meeting mm -hmm. to look for input. Mm -hmm. you, you know, know I think that's kind of what Matt was trying to get to is to have the rec commission have an open meeting to and and have them maybe advertise this meeting either on front porch forum or something so that people know well they're going to talk about right a town input yeah More town input right and, and um, on a more a more broad scale shall we say <laughs> right and with a less um I don't know, the, with a less truncated timeline so this kind of the sooner input can be uh coming in to you guys from the public i think the more receptive everyone is Right. Uh, well, the good news is we have the winter. Nothing's going to happen over the winter. Right. Um, we're very happy to work with uh, uh, this person over the winter. That was the, that's the premise that we're having. Mm -hmm. But he's not interested in extending extended circumstances of, of, of approval, bureaucracy, et cetera, et cetera. So he that, would like something to happen. Right. And I think that's kind of what I'm hoping to weave together is what I've seen when things get done exclusively in committee and then get brought to the town there's kind of a, always a, a, a statement of shock where if we can alleviate that shock by having it be, be put on people's radar now that a new playground is being constructed next year. But can't they present uh, come in to our rec commission it'll be on the agenda on this day in December or January, and we'll present a town meeting so that the public sees this isn't, I know it's been in committee for 20 years, <laughs> but for the town to get four or five months, just that it's on people's radar, it's in their consciousness, so when it does come up to, for us to vote or for sure. the contract to happen or the bids to go out for a contract, because we have to do RFPs for something that big, um, there won't be someone crying foul on the process um, because we can say, you know, it's been six, eight months. This has been publicly discussed, and now the money's in place. We're ready to build. It's two, it's 2019. We're okay. building the playground. 
So assuming our donor is okay with it, I'm, I'm assuming that you're okay with me putting this out on Front Porch Forum, the concept of it, and soliciting input, et cetera, et cetera. Are you, let me ask you, do you have, you've got these quotes that came in, are you looking for input? I mean, I'm saying two different things here. Yeah. Do you have a focus that you would like people to kind of nod, or are you literally seeking input? Personally, I found that committees generally do things more efficiently and effectively than 3,500 residents. It's right. If you want a, if you want an end result. So you have a plan. My thought would be to present it. This is our plan. Yeah. And then it's so much easier to say, well, I'd rather have a pink swing rather than a green swing. I mean, that you can deal with, but I have another unrelated question. I mean, related, but not to the, the, the donation. I thought, I think the donations, but I thought you were trying to get, I can forget the grand total of 200,000, 300,000 for the tennis courts. Correct. Well, with this wonderful donation, you're going to be taking money from the, res so it is, say, the Recreation Reserve Fund, so there are no strings on it, but just in our communication, I thought your number one priority was tennis, but you can't look, look a gift horse in the mouth. You've got to be supportive of this, too, I guess. Well, the, the presentation that we gave on town meeting was the playground and the sport courts okay. in one because it was such a large amount of money. And okay. then that's why we split up those two those smaller projects. So we were kind of trying to decide, okay, well, when were we going to do were we gonna do the tennis, the sport courts first, or were we going to do the playground? How is this all working? And now we're saying, oh, here's someone really trying to get motivated and get this to happen. So it looks like you know, our sport courts are taking the second, you know. Perfect. I mean, I, I, I agree. If, you can, if you're going to get a donation of over 50% of what it's going to cost for the, for the uh, playground, I would definitely pursue that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Plus, uh, um, I do think that given one person coming forward or a foundation coming forward like this may well with the correct publicity trigger the potential of other donations. Um, you get one s significant donation like this and we put it out there to the public and we start, shall we say, soliciting appropriately, I think we can maybe even generate interest in the tennis courts as well. So. Uh, and on that, Leveraging this donation, which yeah. is also, I'm um, just learning through the Burlington Playground again, a lot of um, what the, the fundraising mechanisms are. Um, and a really effective one is leveraging a, a large donation. Um, I remember Fritz had mentioned and at a meeting a long time ago, um, it was talked about sponsoring um, either components of the playground with local businesses could have the opportunity to do that. Um, the Flynn Theater, back when I was a kid, did a huge renovation and um, seats were sponsored. So there's a small plaque on the back of a seat that says, you know, I think it was not a small donation, it was probably a few hundred dollars per seat. Mm -hmm. um, but the idea for the playground, I think that might really get some great traction with local um, commercial and private support would be if there's fence posts um, and you can set a price for a section of fencing if it's going to be enclosed. Um, that adds up quickly. There's a lot of fence posts every mm -hmm. 10 to 15 feet. Um, so that might be a mechanism to, to leverage ten so twenty thousand dollars The name of Matt Krasnow on the pink swing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for the uh, wheelchair accessible swing, which is uh, going to be opened at Oak Ledge on October 27th. There's an open house for the universally accessible sure. swings. I remember when you first met Julia and said that that was going to happen. So uh, as great. far as funding the capital fund, how do we want to do that? Your magic number? Is that what you mean for the next year? Yes. So you're proposing today to us $50,000. Correct. I think we take it and see how things roll up. I mean, there's going to be several requests this year for money, and this is one that we'll have to look at and look at the big picture when we roll it up. So appreciate the input. It's yeah. consistent with what you've been talking about. 
Yes, a little higher. And I, I just I don't want to. Yes, we need to do things. <laughs> we need to get some some work done down there, and and without a capital fund to do it, it it, it, it just doesn't seem to have the opportunity to happen. So. Yep. This is all great. Yeah, and I I, I just I want to further yeah. accentuate the fact that we have solicited this kind donation, and uh, it's pretty it's pretty, amazing. pretty exciting. All right, thank, all right. You. thank you. Good thank job. You. Thanks. Yeah. I found it. <laughs> At the end? Yes. Okay. Um, town management, town lands management. I'm wondering if you want to put that um, it's, it, I mean, it, it may eventually be a budget discussion, but I'm okay. not sure it's quite a budget discussion yet. And I think you want probably uh, Mary's feedback on the MDNA and yep. the uh, HRA. Okay. So do you want to start with the MDNA? Well, Dean, can I just ask you one little thing? You're going to put this off to the side, you said. I mean, I think we'll talk about it later tonight, but. We are going to talk yeah. about it later. Uh, I, if, okay, I just yeah. have a question. You want me yeah. to get to it? Okay. So the financial, the um, MDNA? Right. Um, so this is the, a portion of the audit report that is technically considered to be from management of select board. Um, a lot of it is just kind of recapping or summarizing the results of the financial audit and report. Um, a lot of it is boilerplate or the auditor provided the numbers in the tables. Um, there's a few sections where he asked for um, some explanations <coughs> such as uh, the, you know, the change in the budget, the change in revenue. And um, I, he, he provided last year's and I updated it. There was uh, a few that Mary had comments on, particularly the paving. Uh, All of that is incorporated here between the yellow and the red. Yes. Mary's comments, your comments. Yep. Which explains the underrun. Yep. Okay. Do we, as we talk about this, is this something we're going to, to have a motion on? Or? I think you should, and okay. it'll be included in the, in the audit report. Okay. Do you have comments you want to add, Mary, other than what you that are in here? I mean, I thought it made sense. I thought the language, the way you approached it, looked, looked good. I mean, one of the issues was the roads were in two phases, were in one fiscal year because the way we tried to get all the work done before July 1st. And we knew that was going to happen. So. Right. Good. If someone would make a motion, then we could see if there any other comments to approve this. Motion to accept the changes to the the MDNA for the year ending June 30th, 2018. Second. Okay. Anybody have any questions on it? I've been through. You've been through. Mm -hmm. Okay. No questions, Mary and Dean. All in favor? Say aye. 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 Thank you. The other thing you wanted to do right now was the uh, health. Requirement account. What's HRA health, stand for? Health reimbursement. Reimbursement yep. account. Arrangement. Mm -hmm. um, so the company that we've been using, Choice Strategies, was bought out by WageWorks, and WageWorks is now changing the way they're administering the the system. So um, an example of the change is there's no longer a direct feed between Blue Cross, Blue Shield, and Choice Strategies to pay the HRA. So I talked to the Vermont League of Cities and Towns, and they said other towns use this company called Health Equity. 
and they have a preferred arrangement with Blue Cross Blue Shield, so they do have an electric feed. Um, the main difference is instead of every payment being divided between the HRA and the employee, they either have the HRA pays its entire allotment first and then the employee pays, or the employee pays its entire, his or her entire allotment first and then the HRA pays. So instead of being split like 90-10 for every payment, it's the HRA pays, you know, its portion of the 90% of the deductible or the out-of-pocket maximum and then the employee pays. That's how they administer it. Does it the cost the town it does a different not, amount for them to administer it? No, it's ways? actually less expensive. For, it's, it, there's no fee. Health equity doesn't charge. So we're actually, in that regard, saving $85 a month. I mean, it sounds, I mean, from the read, it sounds like health equity would be a good switch to make now uh, and much more convenient. Also, uh, I, with my only input, if we had that option, it, you know, the school system, it seems to work very smoothly, is to have the HRA kick in first and yeah. then have the remainder second. Okay. If it's no difference. That is, yeah. That would be a preferable way to administer it. The only issue is. Huh? For the schools. How so? Because it wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't, they didn't. Can't hear you, Frank. They didn't pay, the HRA didn't, didn't pay, didn't pay first. It was, it was, a, a, everything just changed as of January 1st, 2018. So that changed and now they're paying first, uh, the first uh, uh, percentage of it and then the, the the uh, and at the beginning of the year it was paid directly to the doctor and now it's the company's been changed and part way through like after three months so then it got to where the uh, it's a basically a reimbursement account so basically what it is is you pay the doctor and then they reimburse you but it still goes through Blue Cross Blue Shield and then directly to the HRA but they don't pay the doctor now they pay now the they reimburse they, the district on behalf of uh, pays employee. pays the employee and then the employee <laughs> pays the doctor <laughs> so it's it's a little more complicated I think the arrangement where the, the HRA pays the doctor directly, um, employees seem to like that. They don't have to deal with, you know, getting funds and paying. I mean, there's a little bit of a delay, but I think with health equity, it actually will be a faster process than with choice strategies. If it, if it works properly, it is, it is easier on the employee. So the employees are behind us then? Uh, three I've talked to are. Yep. There we go. Do we need a motion? Yes. Anybody would like to make a motion to switch over to health equity? I'll make a motion to have the administration of the town's HRA um, be switched to health equity to serve as the HRA administrator. I'll second it. Second it. Is there an effective date? Immediately. Immediately? Immediately. Anything to be signed? There may be. And to um, be signed by the chair on behalf of the select board. Any other comments on this? The only other piece is, the, is just the entire HRA pays first, you know, that. And to be administered, so the HRA pays first until uh, ex that amount, 90% is exhausted. Yep. Okay. And the employee pays at 10%. Yep. So that's motion made and seconded. No more questions. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. I abstain just because I'm a recipient of the benefits. You abstain. Yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> Want to do the contract with the repo? It's a quickie. Um, you could. Um, Diane and Dave Nichols are here. If you they are. You're the only ones here. <laughs> okay, we'll wait on we'll listen to We'll listen to Dave and Diana first. Can you stay for Diana. Rest of the <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Thank you. Okay. Who wants to summarize 
your situation, what you're asking for, Dave or Dave? Well, pretty much said it on the sheet that you have in front of you. Okay. You we are, uh, the oh. issue at hand for us is that the carpenter is also the farmhand. And he's been so busy doing hay that we have failed to get everything completed on in the time allotted. We'd like we'd like an extension until uh, I'd like it until the end of next summer. There isn't an awful lot left, but it would give me some wiggle room. So this is the payment for what five thousand? My reading is right. Well, this is the remaining. Really, it's the remaining part of the job, the total job that we originally estimated to be, uh, we got a $15,000 grant, that means that there's $30,000 worth of work. Okay. And we've got, I uh, forget what the invoices add up to, we but. To about 22,000. 22, All right, so we're probably. <laughs> so all you're asking for is an extension. Just some time extension to do your piece of yeah, that, for the third. I don't know about June, I'm thinking more like September. October or something. October. A year from now. Yeah. Where is the time constraint on the grant? We had originally, we had two years. Uh, yeah, I think it's a policy. Oh. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I think the grant says it was the first time you were. And we just submitted the paperwork for the next $5,000. And now we need an extension to finish it. To get everything done. To get everything done. You have the invoices? Yes. yes. Yeah, we're going right. to submit them as soon as they approve. Yeah, what do you see two years? This is, this is for construction. Rehab uh, re of an existing house. So you'd like a motion from us to extend this to October of 2019? Yes. Okay, I'll make that motion. Do you want to call it the... Uh, I should say the end of October. <laughs> I should say the end of the year. Well, I'm just <laughs> thinking, <laughs> we're still... Well, I think we'll get it done by then. Some finish work you can still do in yeah. You know. So you, you could refer some to Some of the work we can do this winter, but some of it's outside work. And oh, I mean next first, winter. Like if it was to January 1st, 2020. Oh, wow. Kind of show up. Gives you a couple extra Thank months you know, to do the better. paint and trim. And Dave and Diane Nichols. To extend the housing trust bond grant agreement. <laughs> Too much sending that one back over. You know, I don't know if I could. Uh, well, what we want to do is give Dave and Diane an extension until October 30th of 2019 to finish off the uh, last part of the housing trust grant. Good. What was the date you picked? October. October 31st, actually. You said September. You said October 30th, right? I did. That's because you said that if you want that. October 31st is the last. Are people okay with December 31st? Of, of next year? Uh, yeah. yeah. I don't care. Give, give a little more time. So from well, the this just goes to show that we, besides the MOA, we also have to go over this housing agreement in the future. I mean, this is all said and done, okay. but we should, this is something that might come up Yeah, we again. definitely got to go over this agreement, because the, the part of it says that they were supposed to get a recommendation from the well, housing housing trust fund, which, 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 which we are, but, <laughs> so that's but, right. but, it, but it was, but we, well, we did have one. Yeah. So you made a friendly amendment to make it December 31st? That's okay. Has that second. been seconded? Any further discussion? Yeah, right now. <laughs> All right, all in favor? Hi. Okay. Hi. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to do the re repro printing. Well, this is everything's the same from 
last year, Dean, same company. We're gonna do yep. same stuff. Price going up. It uh, well, it based on it was hard to say. I mean, based on the number. I think their quote last year was based on a higher number of copies, but because of the way we did the mailing, we reduced the number of copies that they have to make. So was the number we use on our motion at um, 3,850? Uh, 39.30 uh, for one year. Unless 39.30. That says 18, then the one below, line below it says 18, 19. That would be for two years. If you, if you uh, want that, it would be 30. But we're going to do it one year at a time. Yeah. So the number is 39, 30. Right. Okay. Did we have any leftover from last year? Any reports? Mm -hmm. Approximately how many? We did... Um, the way we did the mailing, and, and I'm actually confused, not quite remembering which, whether it was two years ago. I believe it was two years ago we had quite a few reports left over. Um, we did, it, the mailing has to be done sort of as a bulk mailing, so they're not, um, or they, they do have addresses, but it's, so you can avoid the seasonal addresses. And it's, um, the post office only does it like, a certain way, so we did end up with some extras, but we can't. We can't. Um, the mailing, the post office only does it a certain way, and we had to go with the number that they provided, which was their mailing list. And some of those people um, may. It doesn't totally exclude seasonal people or people that don't live here but year round. Extra printing costs for the extras that we had is way less than the mailing cost if we did it, not bulk mailing. Uh, we not. tried that a few years ago and, and it was it was even higher. Right, that's what I think yeah. you said, yeah. yeah. So this, even having ex extras printed right. this way is cheaper than right. doing exactly. it the other way. Right? Yes, yes. There, has there been any efforts to eliminate copies for for uh, residents that have like several places? Um, last couple of years, I went through manually and tried to minimize that. Um, it's not entirely, you know, if someone has two properties and they rent one to somebody who's who's a town voter. Um, so they, they it's, um, it, it's hard to, to eliminate that if you want to try to get well, you know, as many about, voters as possible. I'm talking about parcels that don't have buildings on them. Oh, it's... Um, well, then they don't have a mailing address, so the post office probably wouldn't deliver one. Right, if they don't have a mailing address, then they're not gonna be, they're not gonna get a property. I mean, they're not gonna get a, um, a report. Motion. Um, yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the annual contract with Repro Graphics for three thousand nine hundred and thirty dollars for the town reports. Okay. Seconded. Okay. Any further comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 The other thing you wanted to get in here was the minute taker um, request. You guys read this. Do you need a motion on that or just make up? Just. Uh, I'm okay if you just generally consensus. So everybody have consensus. It's a, uh, Kathy's retiring. And um, so we have a request for a recording secretary, minute taker. What? Uh, well, maybe I'll and when would this be effective, or what, what's our hope? Uh, she said December, so hopefully... Um, December 1? No, I, I, I took it to mean the end of December. Okay, so that'd be a January 1st opportunity. Right. And then she, you said she'd be willing to do the town meeting 
if we wanted, right? So this is for January 1, 2019, start. Does that say that? I didn't notice. Can I verify that date with Kathy? Yeah. Yeah. Is Kathy working for other towns regularly? No. Oh, you mean was, was she? Are they in a similar? Are there other towns in a similar boat? Is it, um, I, guess I, I think she had been, but when she started doing select board planning commission zoning board, I think we're her only town right now. So I was good with this. Okay. Uh, what's what? our plan on pay rate? Is, are we treating this like a bid and looking at the lowest? Well, I think this is a contractor, right? Right. I think we ought to take a look at what we paid Kathy and make that as a baseline of an experience level, you know, more or less. Kathy was very experienced. Very experienced. And, uh, and kind of and analyze that when the, when the candidates come forward, that's what I would say. Okay, because we're so, asking them to, to request whatever they want. We're not informing what the position pays. So that's not the only difference from other ads. This is kind of an open-ended, and maybe we are fishing for what the market rate is, so we're doing it this way. I just uh, wanted a, to have the discussion. Does she have an hourly rate? Yep. It's yes. about, I believe it's 20. What was it, 20? Yep. But if someone says that they're willing to do it for 15, <laughs> I don't think, I mean, so there's, I mean, reasons to find what I the, mean, the market value is yeah, for us. I, I don't know how you would state it unless you said twenty dollars an hour based on experience. I mean. Right, that would be the only other we have a budget divided by the number of hours we expected and right. Um, can someone apply because they're a contractor with a budget number? Are we willing to entertain that or is this pay rate only? Well, just, we pay by the hour because of all the special meetings and stuff we have, planning, zoning, us. But in general, there's two ways for contractors. They can say, I'll cover every meeting that you have for X amount, or right. Right. you can pay me this much an hour. Are we entertaining both or just an hourly rate? I, I, I think, think it, hourly I would better. say it would be hourly because, I mean, the zoning board is only meets when it's requested. Right. So it's not every month. So it's going to be hard to say, okay, we're going to hire a contractor to come in and they're going to do the two select board meetings a month and then we got a special one. And then we got a, the planning commission is going to do their two and then they've got special meetings. And then for some reason the, the zoning board doesn't have any and then the next thing you know they've got their two meetings or three meetings in a month. They're trying to get something done. Plus, you know, if there's an absence sort of, and you'd have another expense, I, I kind of agree with Frank. I think an hourly is the way to go. And I think if you know candidates that apply, they can ask Dean what the current hourly rate is. It's okay to give it, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. current it's hourly probably. rate plus maybe even the what the uh, average annual is. I mean, I don't. Yeah, I mean it's in the budget. It's in our yeah. budget. So, yeah. so I don't look at this I'd say offer that if a candidate asks. So can we just yeah. add hourly into that? Requested hourly pay rate. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, so you also wanted to talk about town lands management. Mm -hmm. So the last discussion, you'd asked for a map showing town lands and a list of activities. Um, so regional planning, Pam Brangan at regional planning made this map. And I, I started a list of activities, which primarily is mowing and brush hogging, and in some cases, an agricultural lease, and then for the park, the Park and Wildlife Refuge Oversight Committee does management work. And some of this won't we have to go on a field trip? 
Well, what's the objective? Well, the town pond is a pretty yeah. sized piece of land. What happens there? The which? What happens on the town pond? On the town. It says town pound, item number nine. That's really town pound. <laughs> I don't even know what you're talking about. It says pound. <laughs> it says pound, not pond. Town pound, yes. Is that where the dogs uh, get buried? No maintenance activity? No, but they talked about having a green burial there. What's ten? Nine. Scenic overlook. Nine. I don't know what a town pound is. I don't know how is. you get there. That's behind the... Uh, yeah, it's locked in, isn't it? What is the town pound? Pound. pound. Uh, it may have been where <laughs> a walking uh, park, dog it, park. Well, no. I mean, it. it may, I think historically it may have been possibly farm animals, um, huh. but it's right now it's no it's management. Behind. There's nothing. It's behind that tavern, right? It's behind the tavern. Yeah, we've talked about this property. The brick. Before. Yeah. What well, used to be Williamson's. Yeah, there's actually a Publishing. beautiful. That's a beautiful spot right there. How many acres is that about? Is that a lot of acres? That's say what's got to be. It's going to be five, at least. Oh, at least it's more than that. 20. It's, yeah, it's 20 or 30. Wow. That's, That's where they talked it's about like, a cemetery, right? Green burial yeah. there. I, I feel like they were I, talking about number 12. Oh, by the, yeah, I thought they were talking more closer to affectionately cats. Oh. Yeah, I, 12 I, is I didn't like that. Town Pounds looks really bucolic. Big <laughs> pair next to the I want to rename it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I guess the question is, what's next on this? Well, Dean, I understand we also own a piece of uh, lake shore down by the ferry, and that's not highlighted pink. It's a 200 foot or so strip. Right along the shoreline. Is it um, 13? Nancy no. Wood had indicated okay. that What's that right near the sailing it, center it's to the south yep to the south of the ferry and like before the sailing center hmm. it's basically where people leave boats i and i'm not entirely sure it's it's above the high water mark um it may be but it's basically the strip of land just to the right there, north yeah. of the ferry oh cut just on right. the water side of the road, basically. Yeah. Yeah. From the road down to the lake. Right. Hmm. We'll need to at least get that on there noted somehow. Okay. On that map. Well, I don't know. This conversation started in part because number eight is filled with poison parsnips and um, he was, the gentleman that's doing it wasn't able to maintain it the way he wanted to because there wasn't discussion and money or whatever, I don't know. So, I thought we should make sure that that doesn't become any worse. I guess it was really bad this year. And then we talked about another time, Lane, you and I were on a, some kind of field trip down by Thompson's Point. Oh, the, and we talked oh, about yeah. that field and there was yep. a yep. tree growing up. And, and then also, um, it's Adam, right? Adam was actually saying there was a couple areas of the town lands and it's probably on Thompson's Point too that he just felt like the hedgerow was growing in towards the field. And, Good start. I think we need a commission committee, town land management committee. So to consider brush hogging, mowing, to look at all these, to see what the potential use is, to and make recommendations to the select board. Like you know, maybe ten. We do need them, or twelve. We want to make that the uh, cemetery addition. But someone needs to find nine and say, what should we do on there? I don't know. Make it a park, make it a dirt bike track, I don't know. Sell the town land. <laughs> <laughs> or tennis court. Sell it. I mean, if it's, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm. Is there a right way to it? 
To which one? The pound? The, the pound? pound. Yeah, Looks right like right. there's an old one. I mean, it's a property line adjustment there. Ethan Allen Highway, Churchill Road. Yeah, it must be right away to it somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is all stuff that people could investigate. I believe it's where the pull off is on Route 7, where it's fenced. You can get up to it. That oh, way. yeah, there's a fence there. That's right. Uh, the parking area. Yep. Really? That's the access, huh? Why don't we put the fence in? There's a gate, there's a steel gate fence there. Yeah, I think Happy Patrick had offered um, to remove it, but I, I, at the time there was concern about people kind of Going drifting up there. Up there and because Happy Patrick had the, the inn, which has been right. sold now. Right. And what do we do on 13 and 14? Uh, Town Beach and Whaley Road. Town the beach. beach. Okay, yep, I guess so. 14 is Whaley Road Natural Area. What's that? Oh, yeah. Huh. 13 is the beach, and 14 is Whaley Woods Town Forest, which um, the Allens donated at least a section of that. Uh, oh, Har Har what was the father's name? Harley. Harley, Harley Allen. Yeah. Oh. Is, nice. it, is it a field or is it forest? No, it's no. woods. 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 It's woods. wet. Oh, it's wet. The sun was Harvey. What was it? Well, we never knew for? that. Did you know that we owned well, it? It was no. just... No, I didn't nothing. either. No, I remember what? going, yeah, I remember going on it like, before we owned I it. I want this to... <laughs> oh, in, in, their, in their conveyance? Um, I think they just wanted it to be wildlife and, and yeah. Is there something in the vault that says what they? There, I, there could be. I think there's. Uh, we should find that out. Yeah. I'd say for the pound, number nine and number fourteen, maybe there's a homework assignment to see what right. the uh, restrictions are on those that land. I think, I, mean, the I, think it, I think there was some kind of really I think there was some kind of nature uh, wetlands or con casino something <laughs> that had to do with that property that's why it was con conveyed over to the town I mean why would we want to sell it if we have no use for it well, I like his casino pay for a idea a lot more huh? okay <laughs> Well, maybe look into those Or library. <laughs> Tennis court? Competing bids. I ran. Well, and doesn't Thompson Sprite sure. folks this want to folks. spruce it up a little bit down there? In the woods. Too. You know what we should do is we have annual meetings with them and ask Just them. Just make a pass. Oh, you and I look at those fields. Right. They're worried about the barbed wire on it's North Shore right Road trail. in here. And they had a work day trying to get rid of some of that. Used to have cow pastures in there. But we can ask them that what their thoughts are. Um, um, and I think that a fall or winter hike on a lot of this would be really good because you can like see through the trees. We wouldn't have the trees. You could see inside the. Well, they do that or a jet ranger tour. Uh, Steve has a Polaris four wheeler. I saw him tooling around these roads yes Sunday. Turn off people's septic system. Steve Williams. Steve Williams, yeah. Oh, I have a he was either. having a ball. It was a sunny day. I got joy. Uh, the Peace Mountain Natural Area is owned by UPM. It technically is a town property, but with a 999 year lease to UVM. For one dollar, wasn't it? Something like that. How yeah. long ago did it stack? I think in the 1800s. So. Got some time. <laughs> So you're going to answer those, get that done, and then where are we going to... Oh, well, maybe we pick one to look at. Clarifying if that should be pink. Sorry? Should that be pink? Whether oh, the, uh, the, the UVM, the Peas Mountain? Yeah. Are they up there? Yeah. It'd <laughs> be interesting to see what the terms of their lease is, too. Right. Yeah, they may have. Yeah. We had to raise that their probably rate. like 10 years ago. <laughs> to raise pay for the tennis courts. It was gone through 10 years ago? Yeah. Well, uh, I remember when, it was probably like 10 years ago, right, Dean, when people discovered that yeah. the yeah. town actually owned ah. East Mountain ah. and leased it to UVM. Oh, maybe for uh, yeah. dogs. Some, um, 
I can't remember why right this second. Oh, maybe uh, the development. Okay. I bet you that question came up when that development went in. And, oh yeah, that's what it sounds like time-wise. Williams Woods is not owned by the town? No, that's uh, Nature Conservancy. That's what? Nature? Conservancy. Conservancy. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you want to look at uh, the next item? It's interesting to see that this, the county, that the Chittenden provided this, this map that shows the town property line extending out into the lake quite a ways. That's quite a ways. I saw that. That was a question when they were talking oh, about yeah. the TDI the thing. Cable. And I wonder where they came up with that information. Huh. That's interesting. You're taking talking about this line right here. Look yeah. It's even curved. It kind of curves out here and goes off and somewhere out here. It goes off the paper. Well, Massachusetts is having to solve their electri electrical problem. Maybe they'll come back. New Hampshire turned them down. They didn't give them a permit. <laughs> and we were willing to do anything, just pay us more money. At least we know what's here now. <laughs> Okay, is there a motion to approve the minutes of October 8th, 2018? So moved. Okay, as may be modified. Is that seconded? Second. Okay. I didn't see anything I went through. I have a question, Dean. The uh, Thompson Point Wastewater Ordinance, is that, so we approved it, but do we, do we have a hearing? I can't remember what's No, it's, um, it's approved and it goes into effect 60 days from the date of approval if there's no petition submitted. So I posted notices okay. and put it in the newspaper. Okay. What's approved? Thompson's Point Wastewater Ordinance. We approved it on these, these we minutes. We approved here. it, and there's, a, and there's basically a waiting period for it to become effect, effective. This is an example of this October 8th, which is about 10 pages, 11 pages. And then this was a um, 6 o'clock, and we ended probably around 9 o'clock. So this is the depth. So you don't mind my 11 page document? <laughs> oh, you have an 11 page document already? Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> any, other, any comments? All in favor of the minutes as written in the paper by saying aye. 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 Okay. Are there any updates? Select board updates. Yeah, I'll do the adjournment. <laughs> well, there were some questions. Well, the time of adjournment? Well, that's a good question. Um, before we. That was after the executive session. Yeah. Gosh, I think it was 10 uh, minutes. Uh, uh, 10 o'clock. Oh, I, I think 10, 10 I think we should put 10 o'clock in there. Yeah. Because then we kind of went into general conversation. 10 o'clock. Mm -hmm. No action when was taken. When did we convene? Uh, was it 10? Yeah, no action was taken. No action was taken. Just to clarify. This is convened. There were other blanks in there as well. Yes. Yeah. Convened at? Uh, motion is to adjourn and seconded by who? Uh, motion by Matt, seconded by Fritz. Uh, that's going to be a guess. Yeah, I'd say nine o'clock. <laughs> We've been on schedule yeah, pretty much. Four fifty-one says motion doesn't have anybody, and then on four fifty-six it doesn't have a time. Looks like nine o five based on the summary here. Okay. Oh, to go into executive session. Yep, yep. nine o five. And we came out at ten. I wouldn't come out at nine thirty. Yep. Okay. Um, we're on to select board updates. Uh, there was someone had asked a member of the couple members of the wastewater committee. The, uh, there was rumors that some people who aren't 
happy with the concept, wanted to start a petition to make it uh, a town decision as opposed to an ordinance. And we got some clarification from the the uh, our attorney. And any is this center of town or is this Thompson's Point? Center of town. Okay. Yeah. West Village Wastewater West Committee. Village. Because a number of the people on the committee were wanted to make sure they weren't spinning the wheels what a process would be and should the product be approved by the select board then there's the 60-day period afterwards which a petition can be lodged and then any um, vote on that would happen at a floor vote not a Australian ballot vote which was one of the questions so I just wanted to update people on that tidbit from the our attorney. Okay. But the people on the committee are still want to move forward. Oh yeah, we're still still. This, that would just know, be the contingency. That was just an answer that, that nobody had and would probably apply to a number of concerns. Yeah. Is that would be the the process I would think to for any petition to address that issue of the ordinance would be after it passed, if it does, to then petition. That's the redress that citizens have if they don't like yes. what the select board put forward like to the, the town originally. There were some, yeah, well, the, the sidewalk's a little different because the, that's not an ordinance and that's not a, a specific job given to the select board sewer stuff. So hmm. anyway, I don't know if that clarifies anything or if anybody else heard those. But you're saying we can proceed, we can approve, and we can be challenged. Yes, and the challenge would be at a floor vote as opposed to an Australian ballot. Because the town has not decided to handle those types of issues through Australian ballot. Okay. Against our charter. So that's nope, the, just because that's of the, statute. That's state statute, because it's not specifically in the charter to, oh. to run municipal ordinances like that. So and we're still on track for another probably a couple months and then we'll be done different topic um, at our last meeting you authorized Matt and I to meet with a realtor related to parking at the senior center that meetings tomorrow at four o'clock just to let you know and we we know nothing just first meeting not sure what's gonna come of it four o'clock here in the town hall um, another thing to say is I'm away November 1 through 10, and I know you're traveling about the same, same time, exactly the same, same time. dates. So, um, Matt, you got to sign the warrant, especially the payroll stuff. Sure thing. Um, any other updates? Um, this is our packet of the performance reviews. And two points to make. When we change Nicole as a director, she reports, reports to the direct to the select board. And as I did with Dean, I did a report on him that you guys have a copy of. Matt, I'm thinking that you should probably do the same for Nicole, meet with her and do a, a write-up and um, then we would review, when we're ready, Dean's, Aaron's, Daryl's, and Nicole, but the two, Dean and Nicole, deserve write-ups from us. Sounds good. Okay. Um, do we want to, so I don't know how fast you can work. It, there's no time pressure here. Do we want to set up a date for the reviews? This is now the select board meeting with these four candidates one at a time. What we've done in the past is a half hour. Um, it's, you know, it's not at a select board night. It's my particular preference is in the afternoon someday. Do we want to set a date now or do you want to, I don't know what your scheduling is. You're, you're the long pole in the tent as far as meeting with Nicole. Uh, yeah, we, we did some tentative scheduling and it is going to be a little tricky, but I think I can get down for a, um, for like a lunch to meet with discussion, her. yeah, and just take this a longer week? lunch. 
Uh, the time, actually, yeah. It, it would um, I'm not going to be able to meet before I leave. No. You're not going to be able to meet? So then we should... Okay, so let's not set a date for now then, because our next meeting for both you and me, Perry, is the Tuesday, the Monday we get back. You, I think right. the 10th is on a Saturday. November 13th. Oh, is it November 13th? Yeah. November 10th is a Saturday. Yeah. 10, right. 11, 12, 13. So the next meeting, we is can set Tuesday? a date at that time. How's that? Yes. So you have until between now and then. Is that okay with everybody? What does that do? Yeah. November 13th is when we'll set the date, not the review. Right. Okay. Uh, and when are you, you're gone from the 1st to the 10th? 10th. So two weeks. Thursday sure. through Saturday. I think you're the same you just said. So sign warrants, please. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Did I cover everything, Dean? I, you and I talked. Yeah. Um, pay warrants. Is there a motion to adjourn? Any other topics? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second it. Uh -huh. uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Wow, three minutes earlier.